Last time, these guys were uh, sent on two side quests. We went on one of them and had a an emotional roller coaster of a time, but nothing really happened to you. We encountered some ghosts. Hey, you? Got, spooked. Got spooked. Were they ghosts? Some we encountered some undead somethings. There were definitely some undead in the area. Um, you opened up a box, found some um, the, the remnants of a, uh, of a of a tragic event um, many years ago. Collected the magic items there within. Hold some log back. Yeah, it could have gone way worse, definitely. Closure, who's that? Who that? It's my little brother. Oh, tell him to come here. Hey, what's up? Hey, guys. Hey. It's kosher tater tots. Yeah, I just gonna that. Kosher tots. Kosher tots. I like that. Kosher, you should make him change all of his online names to kosher tots. I agree. <laughs> he said he doesn't like that. I don't care if he likes it. <laughs> It's legacy. This is it's the legacy. like these are the rules. You're the older brother, kosher potatoes. Mm-hmm. This is his this is just the life he leads as a younger brother. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> well it works. Uh you obtained the magic items there within said uh creepy box and did a good deed in burying six long dead souls. Um tried to. Decided that you'd had enough adventure for a little, for a while, and wanted to complete your first quest, other rather than doing both of them before going back. Lugging the tree around is probably going to be an issue. We thought we Indeed can go back. It, it takes a pretty excessively long time and a great deal of effort. I was thinking about it later. But there's no way in hell a fucking hand dragged skiff could drag a thirty foot tree. It's just impossible. But oh well, D and D physics. We cut it into pieces. Remember? I'm not even them. Not even like the heart of the tree. Not even close. Can you imagine how much that weighs? Yeah, a lot. A yeah. whole lot. An excessive amount. Yeah. Anyways, D and D physics. It's fine. <laughs> if we go back, we'll find that the trees are much heavier, and we will probably have to have a cart. Yes. But this one was really light for some reason. Oh yeah, it was um, it was enchanted. We didn't know that though. It was it was the home of of woodland fairies that had an it was sorry fae hey, yeah. that had uh, enchanted it to be uh, a much lighter wood. Indeed, indeed. Or maybe because of your good deeds, the ghosts helped you lift it. Yes, it's been yeah, it's actually been driven partially by ghost power. Indeed. Yeah, it's very yeah. ghost child labor. Indeed. <laughs> yeah, I suppose. <laughs> yeah, I guess. As long as Ugla doesn't know, it's okay. Yeah. So, uh, we spent the, la the end of the last session making the trek back to the outskirts of the Glade to Alderheart. And now you just need to make that circle from the northeast section to the southeast so you can get to the road, and then you'll be on your way inside. Um, now, when you received your side quest, you didn't... You know, pro, pro tip for, for players who don't ask enough questions. You didn't ask enough questions. You don't know what the fuck you're supposed to do with this wood, or how you're supposed to get it up the tree, or any of that. Yes, and? I'm just saying. Yeah, uh, yeah. So you, you'll probably have to go back to uh, that lady and ask her. Or we fill it partially, or we fill up part of the, uh, the, the bag of holding, take it up, Put like one part in it at a time. Well, if you, hmm. I mean, if you drop it into pieces, the bag of holding could probably fit all of it. Because it's a square amount of footage. Yeah. 
We'll, we'll we'll spend some time doing that. Oh, wait, I think it has a weight limit too. Maybe not. Uh, I don't think so. Maybe not. I think it's a space limit. One hmm. second. Yeah, it's just volumetric. That's all. Like seventy cubic feet or some shit. Yeah, sixty-four. It's a four by four by four. Yeah, there you go. Oh, it does have a weight limit, 500 pounds. There you go. Yeah. If I had done the weight correctly, you couldn't carry it. But this tree, lightened by the ghost. Magic tree. No big deal. <laughs> um, so, you've reached the outskirts. Uh, you know that you probably need to get it through the gate. Uh, or maybe you could send someone in and figure out what's supposed to happen. Or some other idea. Yeah, just walk it through in the bag of holding. You gonna chop it up? Yup. Okay. Oh my god, so we're gonna chop this up and put it in there, and Nigel is gonna be like, why didn't we just do this before we left? I had to drag this a long way. <laughs> because we didn't think it would fit. And now that oh. we're doing it, we're finding that maybe it does. Hmm. Okay, let's let's hack it apart. Chop, chop, chop. It was pretty. It was late at night when we were coming in, right? Like um, getting, it was a little. It was like an hour after sundown. Yeah. Or did we? Or did we make yeah. camp on the? We made camp on the outskirts of Alderheart. Yeah. yeah. And you said it was cool because right. we're that close. It's you not can, be you dead camped here. at the edge of the glades, which was a pretty safe area. Okay. So you awaken in the morning. Uh, Lycus has a brilliant idea. Like he redid the math. Let's chop up the tree. Here we are. So, you uh, magic up, I don't know, a different axe, same axe maybe, I don't know. You start chopping a tree. Uh, once again, this is probably going to take a long time. Just there's a lot of tree to get through and you only got the one axe. Around mid-morning, pushing towards afternoon. Those of you who are not chopping the tree, spot... Two figures approaching in the distance. You want me to roll to see how quickly we chop the tree? Sure. Roll me de roll me strength. Let's hey, just, let's fast maybe we're on the night. down. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. At this point, he's angry that he just can I roll car can I roll carpenter's away. tools instead? Sure. Also fast. So. You guys are wrapping up the, the chopping and sectioning of this tree when the two figures approach from the south. So they probably came from the road. Um, they're doing that. So like it, not like a Resic, you're the only one who spots them before they arrive. Okay. Hey guys, look, there's some people coming. Give us a couple of minutes. We'll be just wrapping up. Cool. Yeah, this is a popular road. Lots of travelers coming through. You're not on the road. You guys are in that northeast quadrant where the lines are. Cool. It's right a popular field. I'm sure there's a bunch of people that come through here. You've never seen anyone else. So. Anyway. I'm, I'm going to go talk to them. See what's up. See if I can at least hold them off until you guys get done. In case they're robbers. All right. Well, it's in case they're guards, what I don't know who they are. Don't don't get stabbed. That's I'll good. do my best. Okay. You head down there to, to intercept. Uh, looks like a pair of Mapak, uh, the raccoon uh, humble folk. Uh, one of them wearing a pretty official looking set of clothes, maybe like lower tier nobility. You know, nice threads, good uh, some kind of like an emblem on the chest. A sash of some kind, a belt, got like keys and shit. He looks official. Uh, the other one, probably a bodyguard or something like that. He's wearing studded leather. He's got a sword on his belt. Uh, they approach you, you approach them. Uh, the bodyguard kind of steps in front of the, the well dressed one. Hold it! Good morning. How are you guys doing out here? It's uh, it's odd that uh, I meet some people out this way. 
Well, we heard all the commotion. Thought we'd come check it out. What commotion? Sounds like somebody's chopping up a tree. Uh, yeah. There, there's a couple guys back that way kind of chopping up some, some lumber, I guess. Mm -hmm. What's for? Uh, for us to know. Oh, we didn't uh, mean to impose, sir. We just I, from the local lumber union trying to figure out what's happening. Ah, uh, well, uh, well, we're we're kind of we're kind of travelers. We don't we don't really want other people kind of really in our business. It's it's nothing against you guys. We just we don't really know you. So, well, as mentioned, we're from the local lumber union. My name is Yo Nathan, um, and as a as a, a, a you know, paying member of the Lumber and Guild and the Lumber and Union, we want to make sure that uh, people aren't chopping down our trees and uh, hauling off our materials. Uh, what trees would that be? All of them. The, all of them. The yep. entire. All of. All of the. Humblewood. Well, really, just the forest round Alderheart. Just like relatively locally around or all the way around? You know, like all of it. Uh, well, uh, we got this from someplace else. Oh, yeah? Do, do tell. Uh, yeah, like I said, it's not your business. So you, you hauled it all the way from outside someplace else to here, and then you chopped it up? Well, see, we, we redid the math. We realized that we could actually pack it in a smaller place and in, in smaller pieces. It, it, it was an oversight, not, not, on, not on my hands, at he, least, he, needless to say. Kind of like leans and looks over your shoulder. Pack it in where? It's just two dudes in a log. Uh, yeah, again. Uh, I'm by, we're, we're about done here. You, you kind of keep going, walking on your way. Oh, all right. We'll keep walking, and they keep they walk towards your party and the log. Oh well, okay. If if that's the way you guys want to have it, then I guess. <laughs> and I just follow them back, and I shout back to them, "Hey guys, they're still coming to see you." Oh. Uh, Good morning, friends. And then I also oh, yeah. shout that they're from the lumber union. Okay. Cool. Lumber union. Cool. There's a lumber yeah. union. <laughs> how can we help uh, lumber union representatives Aaron and Pac walk up one well dressed one bodyguard looking hello there as I was telling your friend we're from the lumber union we represent yeah. the lumberers guild We're trying to make yeah, sure smoke. that folks aren't uh, chopping down our you know our, our, our goods no that's understandable this isn't from around here look around no tree stumps true but is it from the forest? No, it's from way out east. Way out east? Hmm. You know, there's the forest from here to the mountains, ours. You trying to say you brought this over a mountain? No, the uh, other side of the avium. So, so in the forest? Hmm, no. Outside the forest a bit. That'd be the mountains? Yeah, kind of by the mountains. And as I mentioned, the forest from here to the mountains ours. Yes, yeah, so right over the line of the mountains. So you did bring this over a mountain. It rolled down the hill pretty well. But you had to roll up a hill. No, it was on the mountain. I was on the mountain. Okay, okay, yeah. okay. Uh huh. And you and you rolled it down the mountain, and then yeah. carried it through the forest without a you cart. Drug and it then with that stiff. Decided to chop it up here. Uh, yeah, we were intending to sell it up in the uh, Alderheart, but uh, we didn't know how we were going to get it up the elevator, so we're dropping it up. Uh huh. And and you and you dragged it on a skiff. Yeah, that one right over there. This thing must weigh two thousand pounds. What can I say? Not not quite that much. It's about four hundred and forty pounds. Ugly here is a is a stout work. Is it hollow? It's light. Doesn't look light. It's fairly fibrous. Grab it and grab a chunk of it and hand it to him. You'd think it'd be heavier, right? Hold on for a... Hmm. 
It is surprisingly light. Pretty cool, right? Very cool. Where'd you say you found this? In the mountains, way out east. Yeah? Can you, uh... I'll, I'll pay you if you tell me where. Hmm. How much? 100 gold. You know, honestly, I don't even know how... We followed, like, a, a game trail all mm -hmm. the way north. And then we cut directly east. And it was on the side of the mountains up there. You went northeast? Yeah. But the avium is east, maybe southeast. You said this was on the other side of the avium. So we... <laughs> it's pretty far. Somewhere out east. We may saying... have got lost along the way. I'm just saying your story doesn't really line up very well. I mean, it was our first time out there. We weren't exactly keeping track that well. So it was your first time. You don't know how you got there or how you got here. You're pretty mm. sure it was on the mountain. Yeah, it was definitely on the mountain. And you dragged it all the way through the forest. Several days worth of travel. Yeah. Hmm. I see. I see. And uh, while well, you were in the mountain, I mean, you know, the mountains, uh, I mean, the whole mountain range, the Crest Mountains, they're pretty much owned by the lingering remnants of the bandits. And you didn't you didn't see any of those? You didn't get waylaid? Oh, we, we or we, we've gotten screwed by bandits a couple yeah. of times. We like, killed some. We got one of their emblems. Oh, yeah? Yep. Yeah. 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 Like his Doug digs it out of his pack. Hmm. Hmm. I see. I see. You know, these bandits are on the west side of the forest. I guess they expanded. Mm, no, because we own the east side of the forest. So they couldn't have expanded. It's like you guys said earlier that you own the entire forest. Oh, yeah, the Lumberers Guild does. These are just some dudes in the mountains, man. I don't know what to say. Hmm. There's an awful lot of holes in this story there, friend. Are you guys harboring... Bandits in your woods? Arboring. All, all the lumber? Arboring? We are bandits. Yeah. What do you mean? Oh, well. The Lumber's Guild is bandits? No, no, no. We are bandits, and we happen to be members of the Lumber's Guild. Oh, that's cool. Um, no, we're not really moving in on your turf or anything, though. Like, uh, this is it. This is a favor for a friend that we're going to go sell, and then we're out of the game. You ain't got to worry about any of that. Hmm. But if you need if you need trees like this, yeah, out east, a little bit north, mountains. Really? Not up a game trail, a couple days, big open glade, purple heartwood? Yeah, actually, they looked a lot like that. We saw some there, too. Weird. Yeah. Funny the coincidences that happen out here. It's a magical place. Hmm. So are you uh, rivals of those other bandits out west? You could say that. Hmm. So yeah, y'all don't uh, kidnap people like they do. Mm, no, we're we're more of a material goods kind of deal. That's cool. It, you do it under protection of the law. I mean, I mean, he doesn't bother to explain further. So. <laughs> Let's say you wanted to expand your operation west of Alderheart, where these other bandits are, right? Uh, no, not really. I mean, no interest at all. It's like if they weren't there, we would, but since they are there and they're really scary, we don't. I mean, we might be willing to help you. We're not particularly fans of them. No. You guys want to become bandits? Hmm. What does it entail? Banditry. Stealing. How much do you pay? Nothing. So Nothing. We, Nothing. we banditry. What is it supposed to be like scavenger rights or something? Hmm. Who doesn't pay? There's no, no salary. But. Well, but then, how do you? What you you just throw food at us and we go out and commit crimes in your? I mean, look. When you think about bandits, it's not like you're thinking about 
well-to-do people with homes and fireplaces, right? These are downtrodden, unlucky, those who are without and need. I mean, the... we're unlucky, but that's the, the, the rest of it doesn't really apply. I'd like to uh, provide for those people without them having to resort to crime. I'm sure you would. Um, why don't you start with the 10,000 people who are like that, but not yet bandits, living in the roots of Alderheart? Oh, that'd be a good you place could try, to try, but... I mean, we can create water. Water is not usually the issue. More like food. Hmm. Yeah, we can't create a lot of food. Have they considered forming an anarcho-syndactic commune? Hmm. Tried that a while back. Big bandit uprising got quelled pretty harshly. Ow. Well, you know, these wide open fields all around the Alderheart, why don't they just farm them? Hmm. Seems like a good idea, like on the top, but if you dig enough, you'll figure out that there's really not a lot of nutrient, nutrients in the soil. The Alderheart tree pretty much eats up everything beneath its canopy. Wow. Hmm. So if we could find a way to supply a lot of food and maybe raw materials to the people under the tree and do a lot of good? Um, yeah, but it'd be treating the symptom, right? It's really more like they need a place to go so they can sustain themselves. Oh, like start a new village. Something like that. But there's been the fires, the uh, civil unrest from the swamplands, the, the bandits, you know, our presence, the bandit presence has been growing again. Hey. Why don't you just Fires? follow the game trail all the way up northeast, clear out a ton of those woods, plant some crops, and you can be the mayor. Mayor? I'm a bandit. Yeah. I want to be a mayor? Man, you can oh, run yeah, it down. Yeah, you it. could be a mayor. You could do it. I, I mean, most look. most revolutionaries become their own perpetuating... Absolutely. Yeah, but I'm more the distract people while we rob them kind of guy. Not the lead others kind of guy. Ah, so that's what you've been doing here. Right, obviously. Ah, I see. Mm. I see. I, I, he looks over at the wood. What wood? Yeah. So yeah, gonna... that was pretty clever, all things considered. I do my best. Yeah. yeah. So I'm going to size these two up really well. Um... The three of you could pretty easily handle them, assuming they are all that they only what they appear to be. And I assuming mean, that there's not really many layers in the forest behind them. Yeah, yeah, the real assumption is that there aren't a whole bunch more somewhere. So uh, you're the leader of these bandits, nope. or just the distraction? I, I mentioned I'm the distraction. Man, that's a really unlucky position to be in. Not usually. Because when things get ugly, I mean, wouldn't your head be the first one to come off? Mm, no, that's why I got the bodyguard guy. Yeah, his would probably be uh, second. No, his is first, then mine. How many other friends right, do you, you have? You here? run away while he holds off whatever's going. Bingo. Oh. <laughs> what are you doing, Rezik? Uh... Well, seeing as they kept walking, mm -hmm. I was behind them. Correct. I didn't, I just hollered, and then I never went there. I agree. Okay. Well, during this time, I wanted to see what was going on, because it was, I didn't have enough information. I wanted them to leave us the, alone. Mm -hmm. And uh, so, as the untrustworthy person that I am, um, I'm going to stay in the shadows. I, I don't. I don't know if I noticed them taking the wood, but I'm definitely listening in on the conversation. So, to be in the shadows, you'd have had to make a detour over towards the edge of the glade. You guys were, like, you know, 50 feet inside the glade, or some amount inside the glade, close to the edge. You had to, you know, like, when they were like, you're like, alright, maybe I should do something. You took a little detour off to the side and started stealthing around into the shade. Okay. Um, 
now you're as close to the group as you can be, but also still within the shade of the trees. So you're a good 50 feet away from the group. By the time you got there, having stealthed up, the, the remnants, what, what was left of the tree, appears to be gone, and your two companions are distracted in a conversation. Can I roll perception to see if I see anybody else around? Sure. Because obviously it's pretty clear that there are other people around. Oh, yeah, yeah. Something's going would. on. I mean, if he was watching us talk to these people, there's a good chance if he was paying close enough attention, he could see us being stolen from. That's what I mean. He had to go out of his way, then through the tree line where he'd have lost sight of you multiple times. Oh. So with your perception check, you don't spot anyone uh, stealing the tree, but as you reach your hiding spot, you spot other people. Um, and several of them are carrying some sort of large something under a tarp. And they're just leaving. Do I know how many people it is? Or do I just see a group? You see three people carrying the large something. And there are other figures around them, but not uh, so separately that you can count them. Since I can so you... see them, I'm going to Hunter's Mark one of them. Okay. Um, so it's probably Keller. And then since I've done that, I'm going to just wait until they pass. And then I guess I, I don't know. Hmm. I'm trying to think what well, I I'm not really gonna be able to overpower either one of them either. <laughs> I'm gonna wait and see how it plays out from the from from the shadows for now. All right. Well, Mr. Lumber's guild representative. You've stolen from the wrong people. You can return our goods, or you will die at some point in the next couple of months. Months? Such a, yeah. a, such a pleasant outlook for a bandit. I feel like I'm doing pretty good. It's not no, bad. No, that really is a pleasant outlook, all things considered. Yeah. How about um, five minutes? Hmm, hmm. It's much more intimidating. You should try that, big man. Smaller time well, frames. I was planning on hunting you and the rest of your friends and family down and killing all of you in your sleep. Oh, cool, 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 cool. Uh, would be more intimidating if I had friends or family. But, I mean, you couldn't have known that. You got this guy. You got the people that stole our shit. Seems like plenty to me. Acquaintances at best. Man, you need to find... You have really nobody that you like? Um, I mean, I had some. But uh, my daughter died of, of uh, consumption. Uh, my grandparents were part of a, a, a mining camp that uh, yeah. collapsed in the Mokden Caverns, and uh, my home was taken by the government uh, during the plague. So, nah. So life has hurt you so much that now you intend on just hurting other people. Excellent. Uh, I wouldn't say it hurting. It seems anything. like your continued existence is very negative. Hmm. Maybe you want to die. Could be, could be. Uh, you know, I'm not really the philosophical sort. I just want to, like, I want to get mine that's been taken from me. Oh, you're going to get yours. I'm looking forward to it. Yeah. I'm going to take the bodyguard. Charm person on the other. Okay. All right. DC 12, uh, charm person is correct. He's charm. Uh, it's wisdom saving throw. But he didn't even have a plus one. So that's the tiny dude? So you begin to weave your magics. His face stays friendly. He wasn't really unfriendly before. Um... Look, if you stay with us, we will protect you. Stand to the side while we 
to regards you as a friendly acquaintance. What was that? I read the charm person. You regard he regards you as a friendly acquaintance and will do so until you or your companions do anything harmful to him. Okay. All right. Mm -hmm. Big all right, big guy. Looks like uh you got us two in front of you, and you got our buddy with a bow pointed at your head from over in the woods. Do you want to die today? You don't know where we're located. Exactly. Neither does he. Okay. He looks around for man in the woods. Well, not really, if I had to be honest. Yeah. Give us your gold, and we'll let you leave. Deal. You don't have any, do you? He puts a pouch on the ground and just walks casually towards the tree line. All right. We got who we wanted. All right. So, little guy, what's your name? Um, Joe Nathan. So, Joe Nathan. Um, no, 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 not Joe Nathan. Joe Nathan. Joe Nathan. Yes, yes. Where is your, uh, where, where are your companions taking the good? Which good? Oh, the ones that, uh, Oh, right. Uh, the ones you were being a distraction. Ah, the lumber. Uh, mm -hmm. Well, the, uh, there's, a, there's a camp uh, in the mountains where we do a lot of our processing, and uh, then we filter that back into the economy through uh, legal channels. Oh, I see. I see. Which is why I thought your, your story had so many holes in it, because I know that the bandits own the entire mountain range. Right, 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 right. And you're, you are a bandit. Right. Okay. Um, so could you tell us a little bit more about kind of how all this works? I'm very curious. Uh, can you elaborate on the this word? Oh, uh, like in terms of how banditry feeds into Alderheart. Oh, oh okay, okay. Um, well... I don't know how much of how much of history buff you are. I myself was a student of history long before I became a bandit. Once mm -hmm. upon a time, Humblewood was a, a plentiful place. Then the Scorch Grove fiasco burnt down a huge amount of space, a lot of homes, a lot of lives lost. Um, and it seems like since then, the class divide has become wider and wider. Uh, the you know the bird folk uh, you know cough looks over at uh, the Strig, um, have, uh, have become more elitist. Uh, the Perch Guard, you know, their special bird-only military, he says, like, that's fishy as shit, um, has, uh, you know, has, has had, a, had a weird habit of only taking care of bird folk-related problems. And uh, what, at the time, was a pretty slow level of banditry uh, just kind of was let to happen. Nobody really knew if that was because people on the inside were, were like in on it, or if just the bird folk didn't care because bird folk weren't being robbed. Um, eventually, uh, the humble folk uh, who, who were you know starting to lose money and jobs couldn't pay their bills. The rent went up, food costs went up, turned to banditry. Uh, then the fires came again. Not as bad as the scorched grove, but it seemed. Every you know decade or two, they'll pop up some some amount of you know weird creatures or crazed you know denizens of the wood uh, start setting sections of the forest on fire. Then uh, you know time passed, just regular history stuff, I guess. The bandit population grew so large that the perch guard finally decided to take notice, and they quashed it uh, pretty gruesomely. They they killed a. Uh, couple thousand people it was pretty it was pretty gross um unfortunately at, by that time banditry was kind of a decent profession as far as the um you know like downtrodden humble folk could get to and so they had like families and kids and you know like lives they were more or less good people who just happening who happened to be doing a, a thing that had been labeled as bad um anyways they all died uh, so those families and kids, refugees. Now filling the Alderheart. Who won? Let's see. 
Uh, nowadays, um, I guess Banditry is, is back on the rise again. The burning has returned, you know. Uh, bad shit seems to be happening out in the Scorched Grove. We've heard rumors. Um, fucking... It, the burning is con has continued? This is news to me. Yeah. Northwest sections of the forest are randomly set aflame. Um... Hmm. I mean, this is a this is a good living, thriving forest, so it's not like they really catch fire easily. When one does, usually only maybe only a singular tree burns down, but there's always that chance that we have another scorched grove on our hands. Right, right. Well, it's eight o'clock. Low howling for you. Uh, so I mean, like I mean, like I said, you know, it's on it's on the upswing again. Just everything's going a little worse these this last couple of years, um, especially in the western forest. You know, like on the side where the burning's taking place and the the mock fields. You know that the swamplands have had some pretty uh pretty scary rumors coming out of them too. Um, those like I said, like I wasn't kidding when I said that the dudes on the west, the bandits on the west side, fucking scary. We don't we don't want to mess with any of that. Um, you're you're like mountain range bandit groups and the uh, you know those of us here on the eastern side of the forest we're more like that that historic bandit group that you know just people who didn't have any other options and this is how we feed our kids so what's the uh, propaganda you've been fed about the bandits at what oh it's not fed like some of us have seen them firsthand they're fucking scary well, why is that they're like taking people eating them they fucking kidnap and and like torture people until until they join the their you know their bandits then use those people against others. I heard about this. Huh. One, I heard about this one chick who like claims that she was that she'd been kidnapped and was being tortured just to lure unsuspecting people in so that they can be robbed and killed. Oh, we ran into her. She's dead. Oh, great! Nice job. Yeah, I know. Well, it's. If someone's gonna have a false lure like that, I mean that's they're they're really malintent. It's not oh, just sure. become a crime, and it's not it's not just a simple crime, kind of like what y'all did here. It's just a it, it's truly absolutely. She was a mopak, just like you. Yeah, most of the bandits are the the mopak have been uh, were like historically probably like the most persecuted, I guess, of, of the humble folk. Um, I, 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 yeah, yeah. possibly, I, I, I mean, on, I, I, I was, I was going to say, I was going to say not, not super far ahead of you, uh, foxes, but still yeah. somewhat. Yeah, the, the, I, yeah, I, yes. Um, oh, this has all been quite enlightening. So what's, um, if we wanted to have a pleasant conversation with one of the, with, one of the bandit groups out in the uh, mountains. Who would you suggest? Oh, um, well, about joining or like, I guess with. Well, okay, so we 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 have our own deal. We're trying to do. We were trying to take this wood and, and sell it for some some traveling money. Mm -hmm. Um, it's really quite unfortunate things considered because uh, we're trying to deal with the uh what has become the the corrupt remnants well the corrupt majority of the tenders these days hmm. um and you know that just kind of doing what we can in order to survive as we're trying to dig uncover what we can gotcha, um gotcha. well i mean you got most of your bird. wood right like we didn't we only took like we let you cut up most of that thing so i don't know where the hell you put it we wasn't paid enough attention for that but it seems to have yeah been yeah, yeah. Well, Oh, I it, it 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 tricks of the trade. I, uh, not asking, not asking. Just no, saying, no, like, no. Like we, didn't, we didn't we didn't rob you all you had. You're still gonna make most of your money. You'll be alright. I know. Yeah, that's, I I appreciate that. Yeah, um, I'm glad you, you, have you know right what, you now, guys you, 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 you <laughs> you've been so pleasant that I'm not even going to worry about the the remainder. Like that's I'm just gonna take that as the fee for all the wonderful conversation information we've been discussing back and forth. Oh, um, oh I mean. You don't have to. You don't have to. You know, be kind. I mean, I, we robbed you, but. Well, but... yeah, you you robbed me, but at the same time, it was it's probably the most pleasant robbing I've ever had. Would you agree, Ugla? 
Yeah, I mean, we didn't have to kill anybody. Yeah, exactly. No one knew all were not being vicious. You were just committing. You were committing a crime, but it was not violent. Oh, yeah, I mean, it, it's only violent if it has to be, right? I mean, you've got your boat right, in the woods. Course. We wouldn't want to kill him if we didn't have to. Mm-hmm. Right. Of course, of course. Um, but uh, no, no, no. It's in, in, it's really weird and just what's been going on. Actually, a separate question for you. Do you know of any temples north of Alderheart? Hmm. You know... I said we own the mountain range, but only like the southern half of the mountains are really like passable and, and like sure. livable. That northern cluster, they're shorter, but they're much steeper incline. I think there it, were some people who used to make a home up there, and they they definitely seemed like religious zealot type, you know? Maybe there. Were they alchemy sorts of uh, people? We didn't, we didn't interact. Like I said, like those guys, we, like, oh, okay, like okay. to get there, those bucks probably had like climbing gear and stuff. I don't, I don't know nothing about that. Oh, it's one of those. Oh, I just, uh, but yeah, who who's the most friendly bandit group out east? Because uh, it's not so much that we might need to join, so much as come to some sort of trade arrangement. Um, again. Mm -hmm. You know, where we're, you know, for, for either favors or well, if something is similar. trade, I'd say you should probably link up through the official channels. Um, there is mm -hmm. a, uh, there's an emporium in Alderheart. Uh, I think the, uh, I think her name was Eliza. She runs most of our, uh, of our black market goods into the official, you know, market. Oh, I've I've been by her shop. Yes, I, I I I'll I'll be able to thank you. That that should help. So. Glad to help. Um, yeah. Well, if I can, if what we're doing can stop this burning from continuing or being an ongoing problem, I think that that would be quite excellent, wouldn't you? Does the Lumberers Guild typically make a habit of stealing from the Alchemist Guild? I mean, the Lumberers Guild doesn't steal; they own the lumber. Right, they they charge a fee for other people cutting down trees right. in the, the forest. The Alchemist Guild purchases lumber from the Lumberers Guild. Mm -hmm. I see. So only scabs interfere with that uh, relationship. Oh yeah, scabs the worst. That makes sense. Wow, y'all are really honest thieves. I mean, look, like I said, we're just trying to feed ourselves and our kids, right? Like, yeah. you do what you got to within the within the rules that you're provided with. Yeah, I should start the uh, air guild. Oh yeah, that sounds pretty great. You really get like the deal with the guild though. You gotta like convince everyone that you own it and the rights to it. It's it's less about claiming rather than being able to convince everyone else. It's it's it's, it's enforcement. Water, yeah. It's enforcement, not other. Because mm -hmm. if you can't, in, if you can't maintain a, a grasp on it, similar to what you guys have done here today, mm -hmm. then. Uh, Fresic, roll me a perception check. Alright. Rolling back, I don't know, ten minutes of conversation. Uh, you decided to watch from afar whatever was going on here. At one point, uh, the, the big one, you know, the one that looked like a fighter of some kind, kind of like leaned down towards the ground and started walking towards the tree line. Uh, not at you, but in your general direction, just because you happen to be in that shortest path, kind of. Um, it's right about that time that you hear uh, a twig snap behind you in your hiding spot. What do you do? Um, I'm pretty mm -hmm. sure. I'm going to try and play it off like I'm walking up to the guys and be like, hey, guys. Okay. You uh, you stand up like you're going to, you just suddenly decided to, to exit the tree line. And you hear 
I don't know, six or seven dr like bowstrings draw back from like a a fan behind you. I'd uh advise you didn't move. A voice from behind you. Stand still and I say, can I turn around? Oh sure. You turn around slowly and uh there's six or seven Mapak with bows, you know, drawn on you. One of them waves. I just uh say, well, hello, how are you guys today? Doing well, doing well. Got a little wood, gonna make a little, you know, a nice little profit, hopefully hurt nobody. Um, looks like your friends there have taken our distraction hostage. So, just in case they attack him, we are gonna kill you. Well. Alrighty then. Uh, uh, but assuming they don't kill him or attack him, we will trade you for him and everything will be fine. Well, I guess I can't really argue with that logic. I know, right? Isn't it nice when everything works out? If you say so. Alright. So you sit for the next eight or nine minutes while that rest of that conversation happens. Catch back up to real time here. Am I in earshot of it or no? No, no, no. You're still in the tree line 50 feet plus out. Okay. We'll, we'll share the information from the conversation with you later. Right. Well, and I was just trying to look. I was just trying to see if I could, if, if I kind of knew whether or not I was going to die. Nope. That's, that's all I was looking at. Like, like you can turn back around and watch the conversation happen. They still look like they're having a friendly chat. So at least there's that. Um, though at one point, Ugla did almost look like he was going to murder someone. Uh, okay, so back here in real time. Well, guys, um, this has been lovely. Um, I'm pretty sure I'm through being the distraction for the second time. Uh, if you have no more questions, I'm going to go. Uh, well, um... What do you mean for the second time? Oh, uh, I had to distract you long enough for them to capture your friend. Oh, so oh, right, right, we, right. So, wait, so if he's captured, we'll need to trade you for him? Is that how it works? I mean, it's more like they will let him go, assuming I walk away as well. Oh, can we, can we take you either. over to them to make sure that they give him back to us without much of a That seems more like a prisoner exchange. Remember, we're trying to make this look like everybody's on friendly terms here. And you are, uh, friend, right? Yeah, I, I mean, this, so long as this spell lasts, I am. Oh, you're aware you're under a spell? I mean, I watched him go, hi -ya, hi -ya, hi -ya. Yeah, so, but... Reasonable don't you assumption. Think, I mean, don't you think if it were off, we'd still be friends, though? Uh, yes, but whether that's the spell talking or not, who knows? <laughs> yeah, hey, yeah, 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 that's a fair point, but... Well, uh, your, your plight is the plight of the refugees under the tree, right? Um, I mean... We're still bandits, right? We still steal from uh, you know good and honest people, in addition to corrupt people. Uh, but if you didn't have to, you would no longer be bandits, right? I mean, some of us would. Some of us just like being bandits. I suppose. But what I'm getting at here is, if at some point in the future we try to help these refugees, maybe we could work together. Oh, absolutely. There's, I, I mean, like I said, there's a large number of the growing bandit population that were refugees. Yeah, and think about how tragic your tale is. You know, I'm sure there's Thousands of other people in the exact same shoes as you are. Ooh, that I, should... I lied. I, yeah, sorry. I'm just a bandit. Oh. Well, okay. I suppose. That's that's the trade. Right. Pulling at the heartstrings. It's a yeah, pleasant... I mean, I mean, trying to uh, stay yeah, alive, yeah, yeah, doing I, the thing. Distraction. Look, I'm not going to fault you for it. I've done the same thing before. Hmm. You've been right, a bandit? Well... No, 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 no. But I've, I've, I've been very pleasant to save my own. I'm just messing. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, like, yeah, like I said, I could. There's definitely much larger evils out there in this world, and I could totally see us working together at some point. So it seemed kind of counterproductive to kill you, especially when y'all already got off with our stuff and evidently have our friends. So, okay. So, so given a, I guess the question is for for you, given the the whole bandit thing. Would you, if if you could earn a good wage without resorting to something that could get you killed, potentially, question mark, would you take that opportunity or would you continue to be a bandit 
uh, based on whatever opportunity that you have right now. Hmm. I mean, that's kind of tough. You know, I've I chose the life of banditry. It's worked out pretty well for me in the long run. Um, I mean, I I might choose a bandit adjacent kind of profession, but I wouldn't say I'd become a turnip farmer just because I had the opportunity. Sure, sure. How long have you been a bandit? Ooh, you know, you don't really keep track of the years very effectively when you're a bandit. Um, I'm gonna go with at least fifteen. No, I wouldn't believe that. You look far too young. You know, the, the hair, the fur, if I, you know, I, I, marks. I understand. It's an absolute miracle that in 15 years you never ran into somebody with hot enough blood to slit your throat. Oh, oh, did. I, uh, see? And he, like, he pulls up a pretty, like, a fat ruffle. See? Oh, my God. Yeah. yeah. Wow. The fur. That's a lot. Incredible. All right, well, um... Um, uh, that's, honestly, I don't want to think about that too much more. That seems a little, that seems disturbing to me for a variety of different reasons. Uh, so if we let you go, we're, our friend will just get left back and sent over to us? Yep. All right, well. That's fine. Uh, you've, already, uh, you've already taken our most valuable stuff, so that's cool. Yep. And you know what? You've done a great job, and you've been a wonderful host while we've been here. Have a uh, lovely day, and if I never see you again, love your life. Same to you. Ho hopefully we can uh, wrap it all back around, though, and help some refugees someday. We'll see, we'll see. Starts walking off. All right. Um, he gets maybe halfway across the gap. Uh, your captors, Resnick, are like, oh, looks like it turned out all right. Well, uh... Generic bird person who I don't want to learn the name of, just in case I have to kill you later. Have a nice day. Eh, when I walk off. Okay. Um, you emerge from the tree line. The uh, well dressed fox spots you, waves cordially. Good to see you again. Sure. I trust they weren't too mean to you. I just ignore it and keep walking. He tries to give you a high five, but you know. All right. Did we really just make that? That was by far the strangest conversation I think I will ever have with a bandit. Yeah, I mean, I guess we didn't really know how many enemies we were facing. So, as much yeah. as I uh, might have wanted to get a little revenge, didn't seem opportune. That's, that's quite smart of you. Oh, we might have the opportunity. I, I don't like killing in general, anyway. If it's just material goods, yeah. It, it, given that it was just a mater something material that we had only spent a few days on, yeah. Um, we can always um, go chop more wood. Exactly. All right. Well, let's take the rest of this up into the canopy and see if we can't get some of those clothing items for. Yeah, I'm gonna have uh, to uh, uh, and I'm trade in. To find a spot to climb over the wall. If you want me to help. I mean, honestly, if you want to just hang out behind the gate or somewhere where you won't, if you want to hide out somewhere, okay. Um, because I think you might get in trouble with customs. Um, well, the the catch is, is I hold up my hands. Yeah, I'm pretty sure they'll see my blackened hands just like they did the first time I came in. So even if everything was cleared up from whatever alarms y'all might have raised when you were leaving, I don't think I'd be able to get back in just passing their new uh, um, corruption check. Yeah, I'll, why don't you stay out here and we can just take care of the business real quick and then, uh, okay. well, I mean, but I kind of want you there for, are we, I'm trying to remember, what would, what was going to happen with what's his uh, so we were going to do a little trade. We were going to get some money for this, and then we were going to get, like, a, a fancy cloak and gloves and uh, a dagger, but we kind of already have a fancy cloak and a dagger, so then I guess we'd just be getting money. Right, and then and some garment. Um, yeah. Oh, uh, there was a cool tower shield, though. I think it was... Uh, Did it have too many spikes? Or wheels? Yes, it had, yeah, a lot of spikes and wheels. I think it was uh, 20 gold. 
So I guess depending on how much we make off of uh, this sale, that'll either still be a lot of money or very little. That's fair. I'll, I'll see what we can manage. All right. Well, well, I guess I'm going to go with Lycus. You be careful here. I'm going to... Hmm, let's let's walk away from these bandits for a bit. You guys begin. Um, the, the group of you begin walking south because you have to circle the glade towards the road anyway. Yep. And, and while we're walking there, I let them know that I did bark somebody if we really wanted to track them down, but we couldn't oh. really spend our time here to do it. We, we would have to follow them before they got within a mile out. We don't have the manpower. You said you had six of them on you? Yeah, wow, well, I had quite a few on me. Yeah. Plus, they know the woods a lot better than us, so I doubt we'd be getting a drop on them. True. Uh, we would know the woods. Have to keep, we would just have to stay the distance, and we would know where they were, where they were at, where they took it back to to process it. That's true. I feel like it'd be easier to go chop down another tree than it would be to get that back from them, though. But then we know where they're at. I mean, I'm. I don't really care about killing bandits right now. Like, especially those guys. Like, if all they're doing is robbing merchants and stuff, I mean, like I said, there's just way bigger fish to fry out there, man. Like, if they were truly evil, we'd all be dead, and they'd have all our stuff. I guess, but if they're... Think, think about who... You guys said that they were dealing with, as far as being able to get the wood too. There seems like they're part of the issue, right? Oh, they're definitely part of the issue. But the bigger issue is the huge amount of refugees and the huge amount of people that don't have jobs. Well, it's the people that don't have otherwise good living and turn to desperation and banditry as a response. But um, think about we really money. do. Think about the amount of money that they're making off that. They're not going to make them. They're not going to make much off of what they took from. It's it's going to be enough to feed, probably the lot of them for a few days. But right, but if the guild itself is get, supplying all the all that wood, I'd, I'd say they're probably making a hefty sum. But me and uh, Genera were offered roughly, you know, a hundred gold for for what little that we have here. Seems like a pretty hefty sum to me. They were only a hundred gold for what for what's in the No, not even for the amount that we have here for a smaller amount. Oh. Yeah. Oh my So if, if they're if they're in you know if they're processing a lot of this, you know, with with bad means, that's quite a bit of gold that one isn't is getting pushed straight to the top, and two, it's just there. Like, it's, it's, they don't have, like, they're not responsible for what, what happens. It's just bad all around. Okay. It, it's almost as bad as the other guys. So here's the plan. Mm -hmm. I'm going to hide out in the woods, real stealthy, in a spot that we're going to agree on in just a moment. And uh, y'all go and get all this, get the uh, heartwood sold and um, grab the shield if you can. And uh, I, got, I got another idea. I've heard of magic rings that can make you look like somebody else. Um, if that could affect your hands, then, you know, I could just pass through customs as I wished and we wouldn't have to bother with this stuff anymore. I get the feeling we're going to be in and out of the city a bunch. Um, if you can find something like that for a reasonable amount of gold, it'd be much appreciated. That's, that seems like a fairly simple little trinket to get. Hopefully. Something to re something that makes the skin appear rejuvenated. I'm sure that that'll be uh, yeah. a relatively cheap item. Yeah, definitely something for my hands. That'd be the big one. Because I mean, I can probably talk to them about uh, whatever issues they have with my noble past or whatever that means. That'd be okay. Well, I could also sit down and try to make one for you at some point if we ever ha find ourselves in a in a Another town for. That'd be cool. Hmm? Might be cheaper than trying to buy it from these scalpers up in the 
and the mm. canopy. All right, guys. I'm going to mark here on the map where I am, and I'm going to go be real stealthy in there. I'll see you when you get back. All right. Uh, we'll be back down. I'll see you in about half a day. Oh, well, okay. Do you want to go ahead and mark that? Because I actually had, like, how, how far of a distance would it be from us and Ugla? Like, whenever we go inside oh. the heart. So assuming he's going to stay out here at the edge of the glade, it's like an hour, uh, an hour plus to go from the base of the tree to the edge of the glade. Hmm. This, I see anywhere that might be opportune to hide out in the glade. It seems like it's wide open, right? You could, yeah. you could head into the hilly areas and kind of like try to lay low, but your only cover would be those, you know, medium-sized hills. Yeah, knowing I'm a strig and you know, blend into the trees thing. Mm -hmm. I'll, I'll just chill in the trees to be safe. Sounds good. Okay. Nice well, see you a little bit. All right, be safe. All right. So I'm going to walk. I'm going to go to the agreed upon spot in the woods away from these bandits that we were just by hmm. and attempt to stealth myself well. Okay. Alright. No eight plus advantage. Could I try and stuff him? Yeah. <laughs> you uh you know you've got climbing talons, you pick a you pick a tree that's got some decent brush up you know, and you climb up there and hang out. Cool. Okay. The two of you head into the city. Um you get to customs. Uh, this southeastern line is uh, a little more dense than the other. The avium is probably a heavier trade direction than the reach. Sure. Uh, but after an hour, hour and a half, you, uh, you make your way to the front. They ask you where you've been, where you're going, and what you're here for. I need up to the canopy. Looking to spend a little bit of gold that we made on a good trade coming out of Alderhart, and uh, then head back, head over to the uh, aviary for a little relaxation. Hmm. All right. Make sure you uh, keep your nose clean. Will do. Thanks. Yeah. Have a great day. No, thank you, sir. Get inside, follow the follow the road, and make your way up the tree. Uh, mid to late afternoon, you're once again at the canopy market. All right, so Resic, can you lead me to all the different places where we were selling the where we were going to try to sell the? Yes. Um, is that your intention to sell it to the blacksmith or to the um, clothier? clothier. Um, <laughs> the intention was now that we have had uh, I, I don't know a decent amount stolen enough to make I guess a difference um, let's say you lost roughly one fifth Okay, roughly. Um, well, eh. it's not too much. We can we can certainly split it because if the depending on we we can talk to the clothiers about what they're what they how much they need and then move on from. Yeah, my only issue is that we said that we would be back to pick up those cloaks. Now I don't necessarily know if we need it. Um, oh, right. Yeah, that, that's my only. Concerned. We can definitely stop by and talk to them and just kind of feel it out and see if they feel like we're gonna if we're gonna be kind of forced into it. Then we can let's go to the blacksmith first. Then yeah, that's what I figured. And then they like depending on how much the blacksmith needs, then we can definitely just see how it is from there. Hmm. And then we go to the blacksmith first. Now, do you remember which one was offering you more money for the wood? 
Well, overall, the total amount of gold that which one was being offered okay, would have been the clothing store first, but it was under the presumption that we're going to be trading that for right. the clothing. Make sure you remember. Yes. You head back to the um, extremely manly blacksmith shop. You walk inside, just like last time. Hell yeah! They're back. Oh, they don't have their friend, but I still got that wheelie shield. Or maybe now you're looking for a murder axe. You know, we got a special on murder axes today, brother. No, I think I'm just going to go talk to your wife, actually. Oh, all right. How do I love her? I will do. You head off to the side room. Like this looks very confused. <laughs> on on the way, I kind of just whisper and be like, "Yeah, we found out that the the other blacksmith that me and Gunner went to talk to. That's that's they're married." Ah, okay. But for someone else to give someone else the it seems a little. So you get out to the side anyway. room. Um, like it's the, the first blacksmith shop was filled with extremely manly weapons and armor. Extra spikes, flames, cheetah blood, the whole nine yards. Um, don't ask questions, Rezik. Uh, this one is a haven of craftsmanship. No extras, very little flair, just masterworks covering every wall. Holy shit. I'm in heaven. Yeah, that's that's why I wanted to just come straight back here. This is this is amazing. And like this, like it says it like wants to put a finger on some of the things back here, but is refraining from doing <laughs> She looks up and um Oh, um Mr. Fox. Uh no offense. I, I can see you'd like to touch them. I'd rather you didn't. Uh, I, I, yes, I, I know. I, 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 I'm a fellow craftsman. I don't want other people touching my things as well. But they are so beautiful. Oh, thank you. Uh, uh, Mr. Um, Resic, was it? Oh, yes, it was. Welcome back. Good to be back. I told you we would try and come back. Um, Have you uh, procured my minerals? No, we did not. Um, we actually ran into an issue with film to get some of that wood back. So we opted to get the wood back here. Ah, you brought me the wood? Yes. Lovely. Well, have you left it outside the walls? I know it can be pretty heavy. Oh, um... Uh... Here, let me. He like us reaches into his uh, his bag and pulls out a, a length of wood, about you know, one foot by one foot by. Ooh, a bag of holding, fantastic. Yes. You know, I once made a box of holding. It was um, designed to be some sort of prison, and uh, it, it uh, r rather than rather than a volumetric allotment. It traded, ba it, it, it could only accept an amount of life essence. Oh, a true marvel of magic. That's That sounds wonderful, but also terrifying at the same time. I mean, it was a prison. Mm-hmm. That, that aside, um, how much would you be willing to offer um, for a piece of wood? Oh, well, um, allow me to inspect the quality. Of course. Takes your sample bit and... Looks it over and knocks on it a couple times, kind of hefts it, and you know this seems oddly light. Hmm. Did you find a hollow tree? Not entirely sure. Mm, I don't. I don't believe so. What? Well, um. Do you have any smaller pieces of this? Like, sticks around in his bag to try to find, you know, one of the other... Okay. You, you find a... But... You find a... 
large sliver as something you had shaved off to make more regular sides for the rest. Yep. Pull that out and he goes, ah, oh, all right, um, come with me. I'll show you something. Um, he leads you over to, uh, to like behind the counter and, you know, stops you like right at the edge there and digs around and for a kind of a large bucket. Um, fills it from a trough nearby and says, no, now watch. Puts your large sliver on top and, uh, it floats, and not only does it float, but it eventually start, it turns upward and stands point, uh, point facing you know, into the sky. She goes, uh, so the hollow heart, um, are, uh, very rare among the purple heart trees. Um, they're, they're extremely porous among the fibers. Really? Yes. Um, not really great for making weaponry, unfortunately, uh, but highly desirable. Uh, for um, as a construction material. A construction material for housing. Oh. Do you know of a good person who we might be able to talk to to sell it to? Hmm. Well, you could try and sell it wholesale at the market itself. Um, that might, you know, leave you with limited uh, options, but. At least you won't be dealing with overhead or people. Uh, or, of course, you could go to the Lumberers Guild. Um, or maybe, uh, you know, there's a construction company. Um, you might could you might could try to sell to them as like a one-time supplier. That, that would be more akin of what I'm looking for. Hmm. Alternatively... I think you could still sell it to my friend, uh, Beatrice. I, I mean, you know, light, especially light fibers would very likely still be great for her uses. Hmm. But we'll take some over to her and see what we can manage. Um, and do you have, uh, you know, I would like to talk to you. Perhaps I can ask you right now, what are some of the items and equipment that you have here that might be useful for, let's say, somebody who's about to go uh, possibly wander for a very long time trying to uh, deal with some problems that they've uncovered. That's an extremely vague question. Okay, fair enough. Uh, something to help with fire. As in you intend to be on fire? Dealing with, dealing with people and creatures who are not. Yeah, she, gets who like deal, a, she gets like a wild-eyed look in her face. You intend to deal with fire-corrupted creatures? I intend to fight creatures that, not on, I shouldn't say they're fire-corrupted. Ah. Uh. That will provide some resistance against flame. Hmm. Hmm. Not fire corruption. No. Well, if you had something that would be dealing with fire corruption, that would be a magnificent. But yes, but, but uh, also much more expensive. Yes. Yes. Of course. Um. Well. Um. I mean, these sound like protective. So. Um. I, I have uh, a a a a suit of full plate, or I could. I, I suppose I could modify a suit of full plate. Um to better um, better guard the, the what, what would be the gaps in, in such a suit of armor, you know, at, ar around the neck, at the joints. Mm -hmm. um, essentially eliminating those, but I, it would, requ would require a very breathable and flexible sort of armor to uh, not limit one's movement any further than full plate already does. Uh, and that would definitely reduce your likelihood of contracting something like fire corruption uh, or, or any, I suppose, any um, like poisonous or venomous attacks of, of a creature? You know, that would be ideal. Um, could I, I don't need a, an accurate estimate right now, um, but yeah. how much would you project for such a, a suit of armor? Standard steel? Uh, standard steel would be fine for everything except for the uh, inch. Right. Um, well, the full plate itself normally costs 1,500 gold. So uh, the modifications, my own personal steel, and 
I don't sell things that are less than perfect. Probably 2,000. Total or in addition to? No, no, 2,000 total. 500 for the, for the modifications. Oh, well, I... Let me let me see how, what we can manage with the uh, with our sale of what we have here, and then I'll uh, I, I may be back very shortly to talk to you. Certainly. Uh, here's in my my name is Lycus, and um, it if you ever find yourself in Meadowfen, I have a, a forge out that way that I uh, have built and tend to, and uh, uh, would love to have the company of. A wonderful craftsman like yourself. Oh, Maybe, uh, I mean, it's been quite a few years since I was in Medicine. I don't recall a forge. Did, did you upgrade the multi-purpose chamber? Yes, yes, building? I did. I, uh, oh, I spent lovely. I spent a good amount of time uh, building. Always did like the innkeep over at Medicine. Very straightforward. Oh, uh, the lovely people out there. I, I kind of... Mm. No, oh. you know, maybe, maybe you show her the uh, yeah. bangs that you have left. Show the what? The bearings. Berries. Bearings. Oh, the ball bearings. Yes, yes, yes. Um, do you have any interest in sky metal? Oh, sky metal. Yes, yes. Uh, we just we just had a very large shipment come in. Uh, some sort of falling star from the uh, from west of of the mock fields. Uh, so yes, yes. So you 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 have a fair amount here already, then. I I have some. Yes. Uh, it's more that the um, the city has uh, you know a lot, and I can requisition it if if needed. Well, I uh, I spent a good amount of time coming out with a a, a, a method for getting it into a suitable uh, shape. I've made a a sword and some various arrowheads and other elements for an accoutrement for some of my companions oh, uh, out of the metal I uh, managed to harvest. I, I would love um, to see them, but. I Oh yes, uh, Rasek. Do you have the uh, some of the arrowheads? Yes, I do. I kind of dump a few out on the table, okay. or or what? I, I'm guessing some type of counter the ship we're talking. Yeah, about. yeah. The, um, gaze intently, looking at the craftsmanship. This is this is well done. It, you you've obviously spent uh, several years on your craft. I'm impressed. Um, Thank you. Did, did you find that the smelting process was difficult? Did you? Treat it like a, 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 a one of the other super hard metals, maybe adamantium. Oh no, no, no not not quite adamantium, but uh, there there is an alchemical preparation that I put together um, that helps make the metal more malleable hmm. um, and helps uh, remove some of the impurities that uh, have formed around it um, and sometimes melt into any ingots that you'll. Uh, form from the metal when you uh, get the ore. I see. She looks um, extremely interested. Now, sir, I wouldn't want to take anything that you'd call your own, but I would yes. be willing to purchase the sole rights to such a formula. Really? I would. Uh, well, I suppose... We can get into some negotiations. Um, well, this is not, not, I suppose this is the natural path of this conversation. Uh, what would, uh, so you would like exclusive rights to it here in Alderheart? No, period. Um, period. As in, you're purchasing the entire method from me, whole kit and co Yes. And what would be, what what would you find to be an acceptable offer for such? Well, I mean, uh, I mean, I haven't seen it yet. I don't, can't say I know its efficacy. <laughs> uh, well, I can show you Rasek here has some of my some of my materials. Um, I can leave a couple of ball bearings with you to show the the remainder. Um, and I'll, when I return after selling this heartwood, uh, we can discuss things a little further here. Let me grab a small handful and I'll set them here on your table um, for you to uh, 
work with and uh I, if I I'll leave one with you, but I'll if I could take the the remainder back with me since I uh, am a little limited on the amount of material I have remaining. Understandable. I'm, one should be sufficient for me to test the melting point and the purity at least. Sure, sure. Here and he he'll, he'll put one on the on the countertop. Okay. Um, she, she's kid in a candy store with a new toy. Uh, well, uh, good luck. I'll see you when you return. Yep. Uh, uh, see you in a few you, hours. Pushing you out of her shop. Yep. All right, Rasek. Let's go see if we can get uh, this woods. Yeah, let's go. He, oh, he, he uh, seems actually, extremely excited about this. Uh, ma'am, which what was the name of the construction company? Mm. Bird builders. Bird builders. Yes. All right. I'll go see. I'll after I talk to them. I'll I'll probably be returning. Um, and let's let's stop by um, our our friends next door very briefly too, Resic, before we head over to Bird Builders. Well, go. Right. So we head over to the Clothe the Air. All right. Beatrice. Is um, if out. if you want to hand wave some of these conversations, so we can speed things along, so we can get. Uh, um, I'll go sure. back in. I'm I'm okay with that. You head, you head over to Beatrice. She's just overjoyed to see you. Um, she's fawns all over Rezik because she still thinks she's gonna sell him some very expensive clothing. Mm -hmm. Um, she inspects the uh the the fibrous lumber, uh, the the porous fibrous lumber. Um, asks you you know about how much you have and how much of it is heartwood, and. Uh, we'll quote you something like, uh, well, roll, I don't know, persuasion to haggle. Okay. Uh, Damn! She, she will quote you an even thousand. She'll quote how much? An even thousand gold. For the entire lot of it? For all of the wood you have. Damn it, if I only knew how good of a deal that was. If only. Uh-huh. Um. You know what? That that actually... We lost you, James. But you know what? And then you cut out. Yeah. Um. He'll, he'll look to Resic and, and ask, do you think... How much do you think bird builders will offer for it? Mm. Would I know anything about this? Lumber sales probably hasn't been your deal in your merchant history uh, past, but roll history. Um, I mean, you've definitely seen fancy houses made of rare materials, and you know they're very expensive. A thousand gold is a shitload of money, so it, that could be right. All right, well, I'll sell the whole lot to you for a thousand gold. Oh, uh, what, this is the best day. We're going to sell a, a fantastic cloak and some gloves and uh, get some of my favorite materials. Now, son, let's, let's get you fitted. Uh, I, don't, I don't know if you noticed, and I swoosh the cloak around me. He takes a look yeah, so she she feigns shock if she has as if she hadn't already noticed you wearing a new cloak. Um, like, oh my stars! Well, I suppose that does look nice. And she kind of picks up like the edge of it and kind of makes a face like, "Ew, uh, the material's not exactly outstanding." And uh, it, it was a it was a, a most pleasant gift from uh, from his aunt, uh, from his aunt. Uh, what was your what's your aunt's name again? I apologize. For... <laughs> Any day now, kosher. Do you have an aunt, boy? <laughs> what 
what is what is Skinner's name? Oh, Margaret. Marge. Yeah, Margaret. Yeah, Marge. Aunt Marge. My Aunt Marge. It was it was this wonderful gift. Absolutely wonderful. She just had to make sure that he wore it when he was out uh making uh out for his uh his initial Oh well I suppose family gifts are obligations. You know I knew a Marge once when I was a young girl. Nice lady. Didn't sleep much. Well I suppose I will have to make do without a sale of a cloak and she looks like way too sad. Looks dejected. Yeah. Oh oh do you Yes. The uh, uh, was she a, was she a a, a gosling or a goose? Yes, yes. Did, 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 have you met Marge? I I may have in my travels. Oh, very kind woman. Very very kind. Um, she actually one of our traveling companions is uh her granddaughter. You don't say. Yes. Oh. Grand's daughter, I didn't think the priestesses were uh, allowed to marry and have children. Uh, it must have been before that time. I suppose, yes. Or perhaps no. I you you must you you may be right. I, I you you know what I I miss I misspoke earlier. Uh, grand uh grand. Oh, grand. Yes, I do yes. recall Marge had a sister. Yes, yes, that's exactly what it is. Yes, yes, well. I, I apologize, I'm, my, my memory isn't as quite as good as you. Huh? Wait till you get old. I know, I'm looking forward to it. Well, all world. Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, if possible, I'd like to, to go ahead and sell you all the this wonderful, wonderful, of course. You have been an absolute treat to to work with. Um and you know, um what what is there something else we can do for you to to, to help promote some of your uh, brand or anything? You could buy that cloak and those gloves. All right, we we can buy the gloves. We we unfortunately I think that the he'll he has to use this cloak for for Oh, well, still. All right. Yes. Buy our gloves. No problem. Uh, do you how many fire capsules do you need? Uh just just one set for for each one. Oh, all right. Well, they come free with the pair, so that'll be twenty five right. gold. Here you are, and he'll he'll pay twenty five gold for the gloves. Yep. You guys net yourselves nine hundred and seventy five gold pieces. All you right. Treasure. Treasurer has updated his sheet. Uh, he's got a, a pair of uh, flaming uh, hide, or black flaming hide gloves. Mm-hmm. Uh, for for rest. Rezik, if you'd like to add those to your sheet. You can... Never mind. Yes. I guess I'm going to have to... They're supposed to be magical, so I guess I have to atone with those as well. What? Or attune, sorry. Oh, oh, not all, not all magic items require attunement. Okay, then. All right. <laughs> yes, the magic in those is visual, right? Correct. It's, a, it's entirely visual. It has no major effects other than it is real fire, so it does do a very small amount of fire damage, uh, like if you hit something with it. But before I leave, mm -hmm. I ask if there any way, once I light these, is there any way to put it out? Oh, um, well, I suppose you could fully submerge them in water. Uh, or, wait. Got it. Okay. Oh. mechanical purposes these gloves are magically immune to exactly one point of fire damage at all times <laughs> okay then 
So like, so he can stick his hand into like small flames campfires. and it won't. Yeah. Like you, you can stick your hand into you know regular sized campfires or torches. You could like grab the top of, but other than that, they're just fuzzy. Okay. <laughs> All right. Well, that was actually. Hmm. Okay. Now for uh, Lycus to decide if he wants to sell his metal. Hmm. Yeah. Uh, we could also go look. While, while you're thinking on that, we could go look. Uh, Look around while it gives uh, the smith some more time to actually work with that metal. To go get what uh, Ugla needs. Yeah. Uh, what, do you, what do you think? So Ugla has a nice sword now. Do you think he wanted that shield? Let's let's at least talk to the guy out front to see how much that shield. That shield is ridiculous. <laughs> it, it sounds like a nightmare. But if it makes Ugla happy, and it's relatively cheap, I will. If you, if you think back, and Ugla may have told you the price he was quoted. Yeah, but only if gold. you remember that. Twenty gold. Hmm. So. so he'll head he'll head back over to the Smith shop, to the front of it where the you know extreme guy is. You, you head back to Randy Smith shop. Yes. Okay. You walk inside and they're like, hey, brothers. Bro. Are you, uh, I mean, I know you went back to, to my wife's place, but I bet I've got you this time. Hold on, hold on. Look at this. And he heads over to a display case and he opens it up and pulls out a pole arm that's like two feet too long for any reasonable person to carry. Um, and the top is a uh it is like a ha half axe blade half hammer with a spike on top and he's like this is the lucerne hammer bros anybody you hit with this at any angle dead how am i supposed to swing that sideways yeah look at me how am i supposed to swing that sideways is it magical is that it makes people dead, or just is it because you're casting fist? Uh, I, well, it'll, it, it's not magical, but it could be, brother. Ah, uh, I see. Um, all right. Um, actually, I was a, a friend of mine came through here not long ago, looking at a particular shield mm -hmm. that had wheels on. Oh, that's been a very popular item since I made it, brother. You know, I made six of them yesterday, sold them all. Really? Yeah. How much you selling them? Have you made any more today? I still got the original one that I was making for your friend, the, the prototype. Uh, uh -huh. And then I got a couple more that I made today in case I had any new people. Right, right, right. All right, so... Uh, do you still let me let's see let's see what they look like he uh he let's... brings out the the new you know the real ones the prototype was something that he had like glued a roller board to the front of a shield this is these are like actually wheels welded to the top of a shield and you know intended to stay on yes right here it is brother so we got ourselves the go fast model and he pulls out one that's pretty lean doesn't have any extra spikes uh, and looks like reasonably aerodynamic but it's still fucking huge as a tower shield right we got ourselves the the ankle slicer, and it's a tower shield, but it has like a, a big crescent blade on the front side. Uh, and we got ourselves the kickflip killer, and it's a tower shield with shield spikes with wheels. All right, and how much are you selling these the, the different models for? Well, the Go Fast model, that's the easiest one to make. It costs 30 gold. The uh, Kickflip Killer, that's the most expensive. It costs 45.
Hmm. Randy, with a craftsman's eye, how much do I think these actually cost to me? <laughs> um, I don't know. Roll some crafty check. Roll, roll, roll uh, a, a any, tool check. Any crafty check. I don't care. No. You know, you've never made a, a tower shield. The amount of metal involved, you're pretty sure, probably costs at least 10 gold. Uh, you know, markup would make it 15. But all this extra shit, no clue. Yeah. All right. Um, I'll, I'll take one of the go fast models. Yes, sir, brother. Now. Would you like to sign up for our flame decals? Would you like to get the Cheetah Blood of the Month Club? Or can I interest you in our bi-weekly mailer? Uh, I say we do the flames. I can do the flames. Okay. <laughs> It, uh, you know, I, those all sound very, very interesting. Mm -hmm. But I'm going to be traveling some for a little while, and I am going to need something to do in the in the evening. So I think I'm going to paint flames on this for my friend. Oh, um, yeah. Good luck to you, brother. Just let you know. I appreciate Randy. Randy Smithy Shop uses real flames, and real fire to make your your go fast model even faster. Understood. So thirty just paid thirty gold out of the out of the yep. um and uh does the tower shield fit into the bag of holding? No. Too wide. Too wide. Yeah. Okay. He's gonna he's gonna have it like try to put it on Resic's back. <laughs> uh... Resic, what's your strength? Nine. You can carry mm. it, but uh it will be a tiring adventure, and if, if for some reason you needed to do anything quickly, you could. Uh, can I can I use it? In what capacity? Yeah. Basically, well, could, he turn, could he turn? Could he turn back that's my around? Question, are, are you planning on riding it, or do you want to wield it as a shield? I want to ride it. Yes, anyone can attempt to ride it. I don't. Oh, God dang it! <laughs> I'm gonna. I, I'm gonna carry it then. Okay. Instead of trying to ride it through a freaking tree and it's something happening to it. I mean, you could, like, if you wanted to ride it safely, you could treat it like it's a fucking, like, a red flyer wagon and sit on it. And then someone would have to, like, push or pull you around. <laughs> like a small child. Yeah. But if you wanted to ride it like a skateboard, nah, there's going to be a bunch of checks. Wait, so what you're telling me is that we can use this like a wagon? Hell yeah. Because yeah. A small one for a person, or like a very small amount of goods. Okay, then. It's, uh, it's got what you might assume are all-terrain wheels on it. Okay. Alright, well, I guess I'm gonna carry this. <laughs> okay. You, uh, you strap it to your back. You are, like, like this is made for, for big characters, like Strig, Servin, like, this is Probably at like forty percent above your head. Uh, it is heavy. I'm only like two feet. I know. <laughs> it's uh, really okay. Then Raptors, yeah, Raptors are small. Yeah, they're they're like not not, not small size Raptors. category, but they're like but they are at the, they're they're dwarves. They're the smallest. They're medium they're, they're small side of medium. Yeah. Yeah, yeah Lycus is like twice his height. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Probably stronger too, but you know, whatever. Uh, strength nine. Oh, same strength. Okay. <laughs> yeah. All right. Uh, so you you strap this thing to the back of Resic, and the two of you head out. What are you doing now? You go into the the, the wife shop. Yeah, going into the seeing if the wife has finished playing around with the ball bearing yet. Yep. Okay. She's uh. When you head back inside, there's a um a test tube uh, in a in a small like. I don't know, wooden uh, you know, holder of some kind. 
sitting on her desk that looks like it has liquid metal inside. Well, that didn't take nearly as long to, to sell the wood as what you thought. Uh, what do you think? Oh, um, so this is quite fascinating. You were right. The purity is excellent. Um, I, I applied some of my own um, personal brand of alchemy. It's not terribly unsimilar to Quicksilver in a certain state. As you can see here, it's room temperature liquid. Um, yes. Uh, I, I think I, I would like this, though. I, I don't have any ready ideas about this level of purity from uh, I, I, the impure state that I know the city has. Um, I would offer you 350 gold pieces. Uh, for just the method? For the rights. For the rights such that I can no longer use the, Correct. Use the method. You and no one else. If And if I was going to sell you the rights for the material in such a way that I could still process it. My I have no qualms with adding an, an addendum that you can use personal reasons, but you can't sell it. Mm. How about a... How about a 15% marker on goods you sell for using the method? Hmm. That would decrease the price significantly. 100 gold. <sighs> I see. Uh, One hundred, you see, so a hundred gold total. One hundred gold per... One hundred gold plus fifteen percent of, of sales using your method. 15% of, of sale. Oh. Well, um, I think we have an accord. If I were to sell a suit of full plate using your method, then you'd make your money back and then some, but uh, that would be extraordinarily expensive. I, uh, likelihood of you of returns to 350 should take six months to a year. I I would be willing to wait that out. Um, I could see a, a good deal of, um, I could see a, a good deal of profit carrying on for quite a while um, until um, necessary improvements. And if I have come up, if I come up with any improvements, I will provide them to you. Hmm. Excellent. Um, alternatively, I suppose I could try and make less long term trouble for the both of us. Perhaps uh, 200 gold and a 10% uh, discount here in the shop. A 10% discount on all on all purchases. Any, hmm. go any goods in the shop, yes. Over time, certainly more valuable. Yeah, that possibly could be worthwhile. I, I like the hundred. I like the hundred, hundred gold and fifteen percent personally, just as a matter of of business. Uh, Certainly. I brought the paperwork. Are you a member of the merchants guild? Uh, no, I'm. I'm independent. Not, independent. Not a problem. Um, I will. I, I will fill out a form for you. Yeah. Uh, Temporary registration, an associate's registration with the Merchants Guild, um, so that just so that the methods can be tracked and if goods are spotted outside, in in case I don't suspect you, of course, in case you no, do, no, no. you know, in case in case of any impropriety, yes, um, yes. I fully understand, and this this will include per the I I would like to also retain you know the ability to personally use this method for my own goods, but not to publicly sell. Certainly, um, have you a bank account? How will I deliver your, your profit? Um, I don't have a bank account. Um, well, this just became 
a little more interesting adventure. All right, I'll uh, I'll see about setting up a a, a bank account and provide you the um and it, the the name you can put it under is Lycus Red. All right, I I'll have to get the forms anyway. Perhaps tomorrow. Yes. Uh, tomorrow sounds great. Lovely. I'll see you then. Anything else? Uh, I think that's it. Okay. Do you so, head out? Um, Lycus will try to stop at the bank before they head out to see us. Find uh, the uh, the Humblewood Bank. It's uh, manned by several very stern-looking corvums. Hello, sir. I'm here to open a bank account. Good afternoon. Afternoon. What yes. kind of bank account? Are you investment? Uh, saving? Uh, checking. Ah, you just want to hold your money so you can write people paper money. Well, it's, you know, we'll call it an investment account. Fascinating. Well, you'll just find these here. There's a minimum, uh, Bank account, uh, you know, uh, deposit of 100 gold pieces. I assume you have it, right? Yes. Fantastic. Um, well, sign this. Uh, we'll need your full name, address, um, proof of citizenship, as well as uh, a, a, a means of reaching you, if possible. Uh, what would qualify as proof of citizenship? Um, well... Uh, you have an address here in Alderhart that would work, or the Avium, I suppose. Um, in Meadowfen? Meadowfen. Isn't that a way station? Yes. I don't think we run the post out there. Um, well, proof of citizenship isn't really a requirement. It's just a, a, a safety precaution, you know, if you uh, were to die and uh, you you didn't have proof of citizenship, then we will claim your the contents of your account as our own, rather than perhaps uh, delivering it to your next of kin. Uh, and if I had a will and testament for the means by which this account would be... Well, if you're not a citizen, then you don't have any rights as a will and testament. Really? Yes. Hmm. Well, Rezik, roll um, insight. Uh, roll intelligence too. Okay. Uh, you've been to this bank once uh, as part of your your history as a merchant. Um. Someone like someone you were selling to needed to make a withdrawal, and they were, uh, you know, they, they had a chat with the with the bank tellers and whatnot. Um, you've also been in places where the class system was much more like out in the open. You get the feeling that they're asking a lot more of Lycus than they would of someone like you. Not that okay. that not that that's necessarily a problem or something like that. Just you know, Resic having been in this particular situation before, gets that intuition. Um, yeah. He, he says, you know, not being a citizen, no, no will and testament for you. I kind of nudge him and be like, we can come back tomorrow and, and first thing we can, we can talk this over a little bit later. I, I got some stuff that I kind of want to run by you, maybe. Oh, sure. You, you might not like it, but, but it's going to be, uh, We'll, we'll we'll talk about this later. And and if I had a citizen co-sign on the account, um, yes. Though the citizen would, would the account would be in their name. The account would be would be withdraw would allow both of us to withdraw from the same. Account. Uh, correct, correct. But if there were any like questions or issues, the citizen would be the account owner. I see. 
All right. Um, well, uh, could I, if there's any forms I need as a part of opening this account, I can fill them out tonight while I talk uh, with Mike. My... We, we prefer to do that here in, on, on site. I see. Well, I will see you all tomorrow then. Thank Good day. As we walk out, I'm, I, I say I, I apologize. I, I I didn't realize that they were going to treat you that way. It's it's if if I'd have known that, I wouldn't have. I would I would have said that we could have went into lower qualms of it, and in in the tree, or to a different bank, I guess, or like if there is one. There is a bank in the lower in the lower sectors. Uh, it's just less fancy and less secure by you know certain substandards. Yeah. Does that mean it's going to be like, when you say less secure, like people are going to walk into the vault and steal money? Or is that like a less secure in a, you know? Yeah, um, uh, I, I mean, like, th this is like going to your your fucking local, you know, like humdrum, inner, like, like small town bank. or the, the first first bank of insert town here. Right, the first bank of Red Oak or... You know, like Citizens National in the middle of New York City. Yeah. Right. Okay. And I just say that I I I, I assume that we're probably gonna, we would probably run into less issues there, and then I'd be like we we can discuss this later outside of the city if you want when we go to meet back up with Ugla. If, if you want to open an account there, I can surely help you, or Ugla could. Uh, but it's it's one of those that. It, it's that's that's way more than last time I was here. That's that's way more than what they asked of anybody. It's so I'm not a bird, and that's a problem. Yeah. Yes. Well, I'll probably I'll probably co-sign it to. Uh, well, and I don't know who I would co-sign it to because that means that there's potential for future legal ramifications. Right, that's the reason why I suggest that we go down lower. It's, it's. I feel like you would get a fairer shake. It, it, it's not that I don't think you trust any of us. It's just, I. It's a business decision, and I get it. All right. Well, I I think that that's fair. We'll go down lower to the, to the banks down, uh, to one of the banks down on the underbelly and, uh, settle. I would assume that I would know whether or not he would get a fair shake on that. The, I mean, the, the discrimination will certainly be less. Okay. More, more humble folk will go to town. Correct, correct. Yeah, the, the, yep. the friggin' lower bows bank of, you know, all of us is uh, much, much more accepting. Okay. Well, I'll... Uh... Should we stop by there right now, or should we wait till? As soon as you just had to go through that, we could do whatever you want. Let's let's go ahead and just get the ball rolling today, so that if there's no hangups when we get this all resolved tomorrow, and then we can be absolutely. So, <laughs> even though I'm carrying a huge ship, I'm up. Okay, you guys. I mean, you guys are head. You head down the tree again. Make your way down into the uh, the more common market and uh, into the LBBOAOS, Lower Bows Bank of All of Us. <laughs> do, do, should we hand wave this part, or is there something yeah, you yeah, want to? There's, there's nothing. There's yeah. nothing of relevance here. There, okay. It, it, like, like just in like my description, it, it like if you had to, if you had to say one was more or less secure, the one in the canopy is much more secure. There were more guards. There was more heavy steel doors involved. This one's not unsecure. It just looks easier to get into. Right. Um, it's, but if it's easier to get into, there's going to be more probably pettier theft, but it's not going to be... Sure. You know. Okay. Uh, they, but yeah, they're, they're happy to help you open an account. Um, they'll give you a, uh, a small, like, hammered tin, um, like, ID card not like a bank card you know like here in the modern but it like right. it, it, it had they'll hammer your right your name your id and if you gave them an address which you didn't uh but if you did then uh you know they'd hammer that in there as well right uh 
it also they, they like assign you to a a a, a group uh, and and you're probably asked what that means and they're like yo you're in you're in group uh c h uh that means that if you uh if you have any issues and you need like to submit a complaint or if you need to uh have uh, somebody deposit into your account uh without you present uh that means that they need to find the uh, teller for group c h and uh they they can do any of those things there um you know we got a lot of we got a lot of accounts and uh so we we try and divvy them up to try you know to give the workers a chance to you know have a break once in a while sure and uh how long would it is there a particular time that would be better for someone to come in that well, we're not 24 hour, uh, so you know, sometime during the working day. Right, right, right. But I mean, is there a particular day, particular morning, like oh, group no, CH no. We, is going to come we, up? We man all the groups every day. Oh, okay. It's just, I, I understand now. All right, thank you. All right. You got yourself a bank account and the LBBOAOS. And we have good news with to to go back to Uglo with and his sheep. Indeed. So, uh, are you heading back out there now, or are you planning on spending the night here in the city? Uh, we're 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 gonna head out, and that way, because we said we would be back by the time that the the day. Okay. Uh, Ugla, what have you done with your day? Sat in a tree. Yeah. Observed. Roll perception. Good, good, good. Uh, roll a, a, I don't know, D50. Seven, All right? Okay. Uh, you, um, you think throughout the course of your many hours of sitting and observing, you saw, uh, seven interesting bugs. Hmm. Did I see any interesting mushrooms? Uh, you might have, but you're up in a tree. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay. Mainly uh, just tried to avoid... I mean, I'm trying to be stealthy. Yeah, you're... So the temptation to climb down and look around for shit might be there, but he knows better. Okay. So you spend your hours. Uh, it passes. No big deal. Um, he meditates. There you yeah, go. There you go. Um, some hours later, <laughs> close to night... Uh, Good. Communes with Alphys. Oh, there you go. Some hours later, close to nightfall, your um, your friends come walking out along the main road. They don't know where you are, but you spot them. I, I have probably... We, we've probably passed the shield between each other a couple of times. Just oh, to yeah. Especially climbing down each... the tree. Yeah. All right. Seeing them approaching, I'll just... Uh... Snap off a, a twig okay. from nearby, and uh, I'm gonna throw it at Lycus. Roll dexterity. Lycus, a twig falls from the from the the treetops and like lightly land, like smacks you on the side of the head. It doesn't hurt or anything. It's just boop twig. Hmm. He, he looks up in the general direction of where the twig came. Surprise. And then uh, Ugla climbs down. Okay. <laughs> oh, good to see you, Ugla. I see you, and I, as as I uh, descend, jump off the tree. There, looks like you uh, got a pretty cool roller shield. Yeah, we made uh, we actually made some good money off of that wood, um, off the sale of that wood, and uh, it was, apparently it was a little more special than we had originally thought. Um, nice. Uh, and, uh, I apologize for being a little bit late. We had to get your shield and settle up a couple of things, but I may have also made a way so that we get uh, a little money coming in, um, here and there, uh, Isn't from, true? from our blacksmith friend. Oh, cool. What happened? Well, I, uh, I, she can now commercially use a method I came up with to, uh, for producing star metal because they got a bunch of ore here in Alderhart oh, not very long. I guess another star fell. Cool. Uh, I think it's the same one. Oh, we used up most of that one. Yeah, that, I mean, we, we 
We only got a good chunk off of it, from what I remember. There's a lot more. That's fair. Mm -hmm. So they probably dragged it all the way here, but uh, they'll they'll do something fancy with it. All the rich people will make use of it in the brief time, and they'll want to show it off to all their friends. So it'll be a little bit of passive income for while we're moving things along. And once we get this all settled up, I can probably go back to my shop and operate it with a little bit of charity as a result, too. Nice. That sounds like a great idea. Mm -hmm. Can I see this yield? Oh, yes. Uh, Resic, here you go. I, I, I yeah. make a joke. And, no, this is my shield. You oh. did carry it all the way down. Looks like you could live in it, Rasik. Well, you know, I got it for me to sleep on. Oh, okay. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. I, if, we I, have, if we have time and money to pick up another one, I'd be very grateful. I'm just joking. We This is yours. We got this for you. For me? Yes, for you. you. It it Apparently, they've been selling off the shelves, and they had a new one that they wanted to, uh, after the prototype that you had been... Uh, quoted um oh, and this was the slight up it, it didn't cost much more hmm i don't like people that go back on their deals he didn't go back on his deal i got you the better get me the one I, I got you the better one. Oh shit once it got like double spikes or something oh no no, no. the the wheels are just a little bit more Oh, so less likely to break when I'm riding it around. Mm -hmm. Impressive. Cool. You want to ride it? Oh my God. I mean, we could. You know, it's I could. Good way to pass the. Yeah, yeah, why don't you? Oh why, why don't you take the first couple of runs on it, and then we can, uh, we we can take some turns or do what we need. to. You know, I kind of started it as a joke, just to kill some time while y'all were, uh, you know, looking for useful objects. But, you know, it's a huge shield, which is still useful. And the uh, the shopkeep did fall on his butt, which is pretty funny. So, uh, figure out with everybody to give a shot. Let me see. There you go. So, I was going to take that shield, put it on the ground, and attempt to uh, ride it around a little. All right. Uh, make a dexterity check. And I'm making athletics checks. Nice. Apparently, without Genra, you're doing good. Uh, <laughs> you've, uh, so yeah, you you put it down on the ground. You point it down the the, the road on a on a pretty straight path and hop on. At first, you just kind of stand there because it doesn't really occur to you to that you need to push it. You know. Right. Um, then you're like, oh, not moving. Oh, I should probably. You know, make that happen. So you move one foot off, and you push it a little, and you stand, and you you wobble a bit. You roll you know, real well, so you, you don't have any risk of falling, but you've never done this before. So <laughs> finally, you're going down a hill a little bit, and uh, you you hit a, a part of the path that's got a decent little hill on it, and start picking up speed. That's pretty scary. Um, Put my wings out to slow down a little there bit. There you go. There you go. Okay. Uh, yeah, it's uh, you're you're a you're a skateboarding owl. This is so much, and then I'm gonna loop it back around to them. That was so much fun. I can't believe I didn't fall off and hurt myself. I mean, this could be really popular. I feel like uh, I feel like you could probably sell a lot of these to children. I, I would give it a try, but I'm not going to be able to make that thing move very much. I'll push you. You want to try? Yes, my character would definitely say yes here, but... Alright, man, let's do it. So you put your feet down like this, and he kind of like, he tries to like guide him and like pass on some knowledge of how it was for him. I'm just like sit there and I'm just like push. Okay. <laughs> Make a dexterity check. And an athletics check. Yeah, with 
a with a shove from Ugla, you uh you take off at high speed. You didn't have to push it for yourself. You straight down the road. Uh, you're doing great. You, you like it's, while you're on the downhill part, you're picking up speed. You're going fast. It's awesome. You're having a great time. The problem comes when you uh when you reach the bottom of the hill and you want to turn or stop and you realize you don't have, know how to do either. What do you do? Uh, hang on. Okay. <laughs> you uh panic a little, realizing you have no idea how to stop this wild ride, and um, kind of kind of bend your knees and grab the edge of the shield so you don't fall, which shifts your balance and you start to to wobble back and forth and turn, start doing big S's on the road. Eventually, you hit the edge of the road, find some grass, and take a tumble into the into the grassy area. It doesn't hurt. You fell on grass, but you took a tumble. Okay. I jump up and I say, that was awesome! That was great! Very cool. Thanks, Lycus. Yeah, you're welcome. You want to give it a shot? Oh, I think I'm good. I'm gonna... I think I'm gonna lay my head down for a little while after all that. Mm. Um, and then I have one errands to run in, in the, uh, in the, in Alder Heart tomorrow, and then we can get on the road again. Oh, were y'all able to, uh, look into or find a, a ring or some sort of trinket that might be able to change my appearance or my hands? Oh, shit. You didn't, you forgot it? I forgot about it. I was thinking I was going to just go ahead and try to make it's okay I can camp out here and then uh you know y'all or we can camp out here together y'all can go check in the morning when you're doing your yeah, other um, we'll go ahead and take a, a look around and, uh I'll, I'll have uh we we can certainly find you something good cool. to, to help out with that all right it's, uh, y'all want to hit the hay? I'm tired from sitting around meditating all day. Whew, it's busy work. You can just say you're bored. I actually am tired. All it's right. pretty late. All right, well, let's head to sleep. Uh, Rasik, would you, let's... Let's go ahead and get our camp set up so that we don't get pillaged by bandits again. Yeah, just just in case we... Uh... Well, we know how to summon them to start hitting some trees. <laughs> Clearly. Uh, here, let me let me offer you a little bit of guidance and uh, you two can handle the... Okay. All right, I'm, I guess I'm going to need to roll stealth as well. Get a D four. As always. As always. Yeah. As Still be. a plus one. Uh, okay. Cool. You uh disguise a camp. Set yourself up for the evening. Uh anything else you want to do before sleep time? Yeah. Uh we kinda catch Ugla up to speed on everything. Um, me being kind of giddish and, and seeing the the ankle splitter <laughs> going over that. And uh, I guess can we kind of talk to him about the overt uh, speciesism mm -hmm. there. Oh, it's too bad. Oh, would you put up an alarm, Resic, just in case? Oh, most definitely. Oh, just in case I want to burn the whole field down, yeah. right? Just in case Something that. like that. Or bandits. Or bandits trying to... trying to make way with whatever they think we have because we don't have anything. 
Do you do now? Shh. DM knows. <laughs> Hopefully bandits don't. Bandits can smell money. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> All right. All right. You guys set I, up uh, set up for the night. I'm going to set up the alarm for uh, basically anybody coming in. Oh, and no. It, it so only cool. exclude oh, me, oh, Ugla, no. or me, Lycus, and Genra. If okay. Ugla leaves and comes back in, it'll it'll trigger it. Okay. Well, if you're short someone to do watches, what do you do? Three hour watches. Okay. Long watches and a long sleep. Yep. yep. Alrighty, who's first, second, and third? Lycus will be first. Well, no, Lycus should be probably second because Dark Vision. I'll pick oh. first since Ugly said he was tired and I'm still kind of wide awake and giddy from today's okay. experience. Because okay. I also got the gloves. Yep. Very fancy. Mm. Alright, so uh, all three of you roll your perception for the night. Excellent. Ah, there's the perception rolls. Wonderful vision, as always. Um, At least they're not all under 10. Yeah. Indeed, indeed. Um, Lycus, in the middle of second shift, uh, a little after high moon, uh, you spot a figure in the dark walking towards your camp. It doesn't seem to be attempting to conceal itself, um, but it is walking directly at the camp. Hey, old friend. As I'm probably... As I'm... Uh, no, I just call out at first. Okay. Damn it. Oh. <laughs> 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 um, he, he walks into the camp. Looks at a, looks over and he's a, a tall, hairless servant. Uh, looks like he's got. Did, some... did he ever call back after? No, he just kind of walks into the camp. Uh, okay, well, uh, like us probably like after two seconds, like of him not responding, like nudged Ugla. Okay. You are nudged awake. And I see that face walking up. Uh, we'll see you, you whip up groggy and look around and uh you're one of the dark vision duo right mm -hmm. yeah yeah you, mm -hmm. you spot this face walking up I assume there's something mentally wrong with him I guess. So he's a, like i said describe he's a, he's a tall servant that seems to have no fur he's completely naked um and of of, bo of both clothing and fur um he uh, walks into camp, raises one paw, or like one, one like pseudo hooved hand, um, which is weird because servants all, all races have hands. They have you know fingered hands. He has a hooved hand. Um, he just raises one like hooved hand. Hold on, I have to, I have to get ready. Alright. Hey. Good evening. I am not awful. Yeah, feel free to join us at our camp. Hey, you know, you... I, uh, you know, you know. Is it I don't know if we speak the same language. Oh <laughs> A rabbit out of a hat? During that process, he uh, he reached his hand into his like his satchel or his backpack, and he pulls out a uh, a a large, like roughly torn chunk of cheese. Um, 
So like there, there was a wheel or a large block and it looks like he's it's got like a, a you know like when a kid grabs a handful of cake it looks like that he's just got yeah. a handful of cheese from a larger structure he pulled that out pulled it out yeah showed it off in a white style and then offered it to you uh the, the two of you oh uh no i already had dinner no thank you that's all you point to the resident all right i like it Uh, I'm going to make a quick roll. I'm also going to roll just to see if this stuff wakes me up since I'm not woken up. Well, I guess I would have woken up from the alarm. Yep. All right. Well, thank you very much, uh, friend. I'll, I'll have a small piece and uh, I'll enjoy it. All right. Uh, the alarm goes off as he enters the camp. He was standing like out at the edge of your of your campsite, so he hadn't had the alarm yet. Um, and he walks forward after having after uh, Lycus accepts the offer of cheese. Uh, your your silent alarm goes ringing in your in your brain. The first thing I do is I reach for my bow because I don't know what's going on. Yeah, you startle awake, grab your bow and arrows, and roll over, weapon in hand, and you see this fella, large, tall hairless, naked servant holding what looks to be a large handful of cheese uh, out towards Lycus, and Lycus is about to, to like, grab a piece. <laughs> Guys, what is going on? Looks like uh, this naked man brought some cheese. He turns to offer it to uh, the Resic as well. Pretty late at night to be wandering around naked. I, I look at you guys. Are you gonna eat that? No, I'm full, man. So you're not taking it. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. I mean, so why? I, I guess I see Lycus taking it. I'm like, yeah, I'll, I, yeah, I'll take some. I guess. Oh, that's fine. Ugla's going to attempt to, uh, you know, Ugla and uh, Razik have spent a long time together. He's going to attempt to subtly look at him and transfer the knowledge. You probably don't eat that cheese. Roll a perform. Ugla. All right. Roll insight. Resic. You, you get the message. say i'm still gonna take it from the guy I don't, or like i just be like and i kind of give him a nod yeah. and then i'm and i walk up and be like and i i go up to the guy and i'm like oh thank you so much gives you a piece and like as you get a piece he stands there looking expectantly at both of you at the same time <laughs> and i just go to put it in my little bag. He eats a big, he eats a big chunk right out of it. Oh, you want us to eat it now? Uh huh. I just look at Lycus. And I just I'm like, and I take a bite as well. Lycus, are you eating this? Uh. Lycus, Lycus takes off his glove and gently pokes the chair. Okay. Um, Sweet. Lycus. <laughs> uh, the rules of this hand are, are both good and bad for you. Um, yep. Okay. Uh, the cheese is, in fact, cheese. Uh, you, you, get, you, know, you get that instant ping of, here's all the elements of cheese. You know, it's a, it's a, a post, uh, post process, or like weird, oddly processed amount of dairy. Um, in and aged, and, and there's something else, something, something enticing, something that you that you want, something that you need, something that you want more of in your life. Uh, it, yeah, you get all that. He eats the cheese. Hell yeah! Okay. Seeing that. 
I just finished the cheese as well with them. All right, uh, make a constitution save, uh, Resic. Whee! Okay. Uh, it's, del- <laughs> it's, Resic, it's, it's delicious cheese. If, you, if Resic is a fan of, like, super sharp cheese flavors. Like, it, it's, uh, you know, some people are not. They like that mild kind of cheese, the, like the mellow white cheese. This would be, like, the sharpest cheddar that ever existed. That's awesome. Okay. Um, I'm going to continue this. All right. I, <laughs> I usher the guy, and I hold out my hand for a little more to see if he gives me any more. Aha! You're a small one. You see? You can hear me. You can ever want a whole lot. And I am the best he. And it gives you the whole chunk. I offer half of it to the He just devours it. <laughs> Resnick, do you eat it as well? Well, I also look at Dungeon. I'm like, do you want some? Or, Ugla. Ugla, yeah. I'm, do you want some? No. It's I delicious. <laughs> it's, yeah, it's okay. Are you, are you sure this is the best cheese I've ever eaten? Okay. No, thank you. <laughs> Very generous. Thank you for sharing your cheese with us. I go ahead and eat the rest of that. Okay. Really like that make, cheese. Make me and then I'm like, maybe, maybe we give this guy something for his cheese. Make me another constitution save, Razak. Oh, no. What would be an appropriate trade for cheese? Um, you finish gobbling it up, and, you're, and you're, you start looking around in your bag for something that you could possibly trade, and you look up at him trying to figure out what, there's, what you should trade for cheese. He's gone. Oh no. We're dead. I'm doomed! Now, now like it says, an addiction to cheese. Uh, yeah, Rezik, you, like, you just, it's just, it was just really good cheese. You would happily eat more of it. You'd like to put it on other good meals. But other than that, that's pretty much your whole experience. Like us, you'll learn about your problem. <laughs> <laughs> That's so funny. Oh, geez. this this is gonna turn into another alchemist, isn't it? I mean, I mean, for science, <laughs> for science. <laughs> okay, greener pastures. Mm-hmm. I kind of no. It's like, could you make some more of that? Uh, you know all the ingredients except for that something that you want more of. You're not sure how to make that. That I, but I want more of. It. Right. So I was watching this guy pretty closely the whole time. Mm-hmm. Did he just disappear? No. Uh, roll. Hmm. What would Ugla have? Been? He. I mean, investigation was woken up from was woken up from my sleep. Somehow, got both of my friends to eat his weird cheese, uh, including my friend, my very close friend, who I tried to warn not to eat it. Well, I was very much trying to figure out what the fuck this game was. Okay, uh, roll investigation first. Okay. Uh... Now roll perception. Okay. Uh, as they chowed down on their larger hunks of cheese, uh, he just walked away. So a naked man walked up up to us in the middle of the night, gave you cheese, y'all really enjoyed it, and then he walked away. 
I'm going to go back to sleep. Please wake me up when my watch begins. <laughs> and let me know if you have any strange feelings or are poisoned. That's so good. I want more. And now goes going to roll over and go to sleep. Okay. Uh, also, I'm going to try and go back to sleep. But I'm happy and full with that amount of tea. Oh no. Uh all right. So the uh That's not good. <laughs> the, night, the night passes without issue. Everything's fine. Okay. Uh do the three of you awaken after your your extended uh your extended watch sequences it's uh late morning. Oh, I had the strangest dream last night. I think we all did. And I want more cheese. Like, if you had cheese, like, your dreams were just a Technicolor wonderland of, like, Willy Wonka cheese factories. Yeah, I'm swimming in cheese. Doing a, a Scrooge McDuck dive into a, a pool of cheese. Uh... Yeah, so I dreamed moment for moment our exact encounter with that naked servant. Except in my dream, he wasn't a naked servant. He was a strange, billowing creature with, with a long, strange yellow cloak and a yellow crown offering some device up. Maybe just paranoid about the weird naked cheese man, though. I mean, y'all both seem fine, right? And I just asked it to vice up, like confused about it. <clears throat> uh, I don't remember the details that well. Maybe just some sim some symbol. Some metallic symbol? I'm not sure. Okay. So. I mean, y'all y'all feel fine, right? You weren't poisoned or anything. No, no. I just look. It, it it's that it's that feeling. I after you have a really good meal and you wake up the next day and you're thinking about that really good meal. Hmm. Kind of how I'm feeling right now. Cool. Anyway, I need to go. I need to go talk to a blacksmith to give her details about my bank account and look over papers and all that. And look for a ring or a amulet or something. Right, and look for your, and look for your ring. You want me to go with again, or do you want our uh, Resic, uh, Why don't you? Why Why don't we stay? Have you stay here with uh, us, so we can just um. Oh, you don't need them for the bank account for the racist bank. Oh, I got a different bank. Oh, okay. Yeah, I want. I, want, I did not. I want got the All of Us Bank. Oh, okay. All right. Um, it's it's more or less if bandits or anything else weird knows we're here, they know we're here now, and Ooh. I don't want to leave somebody on there. I'll show you the new spot on the map. Do you want us to get more cheese if we run into that guy again? Yes, please. Okay. All right. So, Randy, do you want me to just hand wave him yeah, going into go town? Finding us. You do the thing. Ta da. Ta da. Uh, he goes over to the clothier shop. Is it, Do they have a ring that has something that will disguise blemishes on? Um, I mean, she can certainly sell him gloves, but she's not a magic item dealer. She, have, she has some clothes that are magical, 
but not like real magic items. Right. Uh, do they have any rings or something similar that Lycus could turn into a, a small effect, like a a, a minor illusion? Mm, not at the clothier shop. You head over to Eliza's Emporium or the actual magic item shop, you might find something more like you're looking for. Uh, the actual item, magic item shop. Sure. Um, you can find the you know uh, you know the the real you know disguise items. Uh, that's very expensive. Uh, alternatively, if you're looking for something that's like just you know if uh, if you're you're, you're looking for the, a, a ring of Instagram filtering. Um, <laughs> yes, the the ring of Instagram filtering, the ring of my hands don't have all these vein, you know, these yeah. crow veins going right, through. Right, right. Uh, yeah, they've definitely made those for some uh, very vain elder older women before, and um, they can they can probably uh, fix you up for a hundred gold. Uh, can I try to negotiate them down to like sixty or seven? Roll persuasion. No. Nope. If anything, you're lucky they don't charge you more, you rude son of a bitch. Hey, I'm I'm so sorry. He's gonna just you know he's gonna feel embarrassed and walk out of the shop. Okay. Um, and he'll he'll go to Eliza's and see if he can either find a similar ring or at least a ring that he can enchant. Uh, so Eliza's Emporium is, is a, a good spot to find weird shit rather than things with normal or regular effects. So she doesn't have any rings, but she does have a, uh, a cream that will make something, will make, like, a thing look, um, as expected for a certain period of time. And, uh, and how much is that cream? Uh, she has, uh, enough of it for six applications. And sells it for twenty gold per application. Okay, um, he'll he'll just go over to the blacksmith buy a buy a cheap ring and then work on it. Okay, and buy, a... uh, buy some buy some reagents to enchant it. Spend five gold on a, a ring of sufficient quality to enchant. Yep, and then twenty. It, do you want to say it's tw it 20 or 45 gold on magical? You're going to craft it yourself? Yeah, let's do, um, let's do 45. 45? Okay. Yeah. That'll take him a couple of days, probably. Of course. Shoot about that cream. Any uses? And did the uh, did the other bank require a hundred gold deposit similar to the? Oh no no they only need ten gold. Okay so plus ninety gold and it'll feed in the the extra gold. Or what like is presumes to be the extra gold over. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. He'll head back with that, and then with all the paperwork taken care of with the uh, the blacksmith wife, um, unless you need me to make a roll for that as well. Eh. Huh? Nope. Okay. Um, were the terms okay in the con? Yeah, you read through them. Um, she's a she seems like a pretty fair minded person. She's just a merchant out to make profit off of sure. her skills. Uh, yeah. so she'll, um, you know, she, it's, it is, you know, specific where it needs to be. It's, it, you'll get 15% of the profits, not the full sale prices, uh, sure. for only the pieces through, through which she uses your, uh, specific method. Mm -hmm. But other than that, it seems legit. Okay. Uh, that seems reasonably fair, um, as a final negotiation point, and he'll, um, he'll go ahead and and sign and get it set up at the bank, and then head back over to Uglin. Um, unless something else happens, uh, you'll get 
say, 50 gold a month from this profit share for the next year, uh, after which the region will have run out of sky metal um, unless new metal is found. Got that? Yeah. Okay, done. Uh, Lycus comes back to the group, lets Ugla know he'll craft the ring for Ugla just because it's people are charging too much for it and it'll take him a couple of days to, to craft it. Um, okay, maybe we are can we, go are we, for that uh, mineral that they needed, right? Yeah, we, we can go ahead and head out for that. Um, do we want to try to talk to Pylon? Um, or... I think he'll find us. We, uh, you know, we left our information. And all. That's that's fair. All right. Well, I'll uh, go ahead and start getting some acid out of my alchemy jug for when we get to this mineral, um, and then we can uh, extract it. Do they? Where where is it supposed to be again? Rezik, is it the bottom of a lake or something? Yeah, well, not. She said it was at the bottom of a lake. I'm just gonna assume that it's if we pan in a lake, we'll probably find some. It. Uh, Do you remember the details? <laughs> uh, not completely. I was kind of looking at stuff while uh, Ginner was talking to her. I just kind of overheard. Uh, but it it. She said that it would be in a lake north of here so it, it should be relatively in the same area um but as far as whether it's at the bottom of it or if it's we just paying for it uh, i'm not entirely sure do we know what it looks like do you know what the name of it was nope <laughs> not the slightest <laughs> We might need to go ask again. Could you really dig into your your memory to see if you remember? Uh, roll AKA intelligence. Roll in a what? Roll intelligence. The check, not the save. He's remembered everything he remembers. Okay. Great. I'm smart as wrestling. So, uh, we can try to get more money and then and I can go back up to see the blacksmith to get more details about what the the mineral is, or we can go to the avium to meet with the next companion of try to find Lily's last companion. Yeah, they said his name was Morty. Mm hmm Well the real question is is if we decide to go get look for that mineral and we go and ask about it again, uh Will we be? Oh, I guess they're really only after the wood, but and from the bandits just steal from us again. I mean, they only took the lumber. It seems like uh, lumber is their thing, so I think we're. Oh, they they they're more interested in material goods than they are in lot. Uh, plus, we'd be going north instead of northeast, so maybe we avoid them. Maybe we run into different bandits. Yeah, maybe bandits with less people. I, don't know, I can't believe I, I, I like going to the avium and shaking things up so that we're not targets time and time and time. Okay. I mean, I don't really want to head back into. I mean, it'd be kind of lame to have to go run back up into Alderheart and ask him about something we talked about three days ago. So, yeah, let's, let's just start heading over to the avium. That's a good idea. Or we could go down into the uh, base of the tree. And meet with some of the refugees to see uh, see what's holding them back, or if they have any ideas about how to help a better them in their uh, plight. And it, where's the bounty board rest? 
That'd be cool. Kill some monsters. Resic, where is the bounty board? I've never really looked for the bounty board. I've, I've really only looked for, you know, markets and trade. I haven't really seen one. Right. Oh, all right. Well, we can... Uh... Resic, I'll... Resic, if you want to go look for the bounty board and ask what the mineral was... I'll stay here with Ugla, and then uh, we'll, we'll see you again here soon. Yes. And, <laughs> okay. And, and here's ten gold in case you need it for anything in particular. Money, money, all right. money. Rezik spends all ten of it on hookers and blow. <laughs> I was going to say, Rezik returns to the pimp hat. Uh, does not yeah. remember anything about a bounty board. Uh, what? <laughs> what are we talking about again? Bounty. I thought you said booty board. My bad. I knew all about that. Well, is that why you came out. back with a shield that looks like it's in the relief of a female? Mm. Yes. Yes, it is. Bird butt. Bird butt. <laughs> all right so resic's gonna make a uh all foray back into the city to look at, for some stuff and things yep okay we'll uh we'll fast track that then head back into town are you asking first, around or what's your plan i want to first go to this smithy uh and Definitely take a look at her, talk to her about that first. I okay. feel like that would be the fastest endeavor. And then if she already has the information for me, like about the bounty board, she might know where it's at or at least point me in the correct direction. Okay. She seems super helpful. So uh, She tells you that she reminds you of the details of her side quest, which were just beyond the clearing where you found the purple heartwood is a, is a small wooded grove with a series of pools. At the bottom of each pool, you will find this special mineral. So pools, do you mean like small ponds? Yeah. Like actual just puddles of water? No, 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 like spring-fed spring ponds. Okay. And then I ask if she has any extra equipment or any equipment that might would help us along the way. She does not. Does she know of any equipment since she knows what kind of mineral it is? Uh, but it's um, it's a kind of like a, a rough porous stone, and really all you need is a bag to carry it in. Uh, not like huge, you don't have to break it up. Is it? Uh, does she have any radio available that I could see that she could show me? So I'm not like this is the color that was there, and then you know it's like a peakish. Like she, limestone color. Or she, something. she doesn't have it in the form that you'll find it. She has it in like the crushed powdered uh, shape. Okay. So she she can tell you that it's a uh, a, a soft green, but other than that, it's gonna look like a rock. Okay, soft green looks like a rock. Be so much easier if I wasn't colorblind. If only. <laughs> but uh, okay, and then I also ask if she's ever encountered the bounty board and if she has or if she knows anybody that might would be able to help me um, and if she doesn't then i asked the totally awesome dude out uh out there as well <laughs> before the, i leave the totally awesome dude uh she doesn't but randy the smith he definitely knows yeah brother if you head over to the inn up here you'll find one uh Them's like the high price jobs, not necessarily the easier or the harder jobs. They just cost more because the you know the people up here cost more. Um, and then if you head down to the uh, to the the lower the lower areas, I suspect you'll find another. Okay, and then uh, I thank him. 
and walk out, I guess. And then I go check the board in the end here. Uh, and then I would basically write it down. So that way I'm not like der her. I forgot. Okay. So I just uh, copy down and then try and have, like, if there's descriptions or pictures, like, I draw in pictures, I try and best remember those because I'm sure. not going to be able to draw them. Uh, here on top, the only bounty available is, like, a long-standing one for um, the capture or um, um, lawful killing of bandits. Uh, yeah, like the only thing you'll find up here is this. Like if you if you catch a catch or kill a bandit and you can prove like if you kill one you can prove it was a bandit then we'll pay you for it kind of deal. Does it say what it would be? Well, yeah, obviously I want to write it down, but does it say what how you like any like what easy forms of proof would be? Uh, it does not. Okay. And how much how much is that for per? I guess it's it's a it's basically just a bounty or like a head bounty count. Yep. And it does and, it does not say a, a specific price. Um, this is it's more like because it might depend on how how important your band it is. Okay. And then, whenever I'm walking out or going down towards the bottom, I also check the end down there. Uh, at the bottom, you find a lot more bounties, but a lot of them are like beneath you as a as a you know level of adventure. You know, like my my cabbages were destroyed by some punk kids. Find them, and I'll give you two silver. Is there any high like? Uh, I would say like five five to ten gold or higher. There are a couple no. that are that look like they are are worth doing. Um, one is just like you know, it's, it's kind of a classic bounty. Like, there's a there's a terrifying owl bear in the woods to the south. Uh, bring us its head, and we'll reward you fifty gold pieces. Um, and there's another one that at first you were going to dismiss, but you know, thinking on it looks a little fishy. Uh, it's it's less a bounty and more a recruitment poster. And it's like, down on your luck, having trouble finding a job, we've got work for day laborers in the eastern forest. Okay. And then I, I take... Uh, obviously, the price doesn't matter. Um, would people normally take the bounty with them off the board? Um, nah. It's really just like if you show up with the thing that the bounty is asking for, you get paid. Okay. All right, I I write that write those down and then make a note of the suspicious one. Okay. He assumes it has to do with the bandits. Yeah, e easy easy intuition here is this is probably a bandit recruitment poster. Okay, and then I'm gonna go ahead and head. Mm. I'm gonna pick up uh, something easy to carry back as far as food for the other guys okay. on the way back. So you get uh, two full loaves of bread and uh, a sack of potatoes and a churro. Uh, More men on like the market on the way out. Oh, I okay, to okay. I apologize. Oh, all right, all right, all right. Yeah, you uh, you find. <laughs> Several um, carryable hot meals. Head out with them. All right, you uh, arrive back. Uh, you guys made several trips into and out of the city now, so a little before dinner time. Show back up, and before starting on something new, go ahead and call it here for tonight. Hopefully, we'll pick up next time with Pepper. Cool. All right, pals, it's been a blast of blast. Hope y'all are wonderful and excellent. And all y'all out there on the internet, I hope the same for you. We will see you again on Thursday and uh, pick back up right here on Fashion, a D&D &D game and stuff. Yeah. Yeah. We swear we do more than shopping. We probably yeah. do more yeah. than shop.
and eat. You got robbed this this episode. That's true. You almost had combat, and you got robbed. That's a thing. Oh, and we got a cheese curse. That's true. At least one of you is cursed by cheese. <laughs> At Damn you. European blood. Damn you. <laughs> All right, pals. Been a blast, blast. Bye, internet. You don't need a kill. Spread on for me.